Order, if I could have a roll call. John Hutzko. Russ Smith. Michael O'Brien. Laurie G. John Cutler. Bob Wilborg. Great. If everyone would join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have two upcoming meeting dates on February 19th and March 5th. And we have uh, two sets of minutes for approval. I did not get a chance to get through the December 18th ones, but um, let's see, November 20th. Is everybody here? Okay, I'm doing, I don't have the attendance for the November 20th, so shall we I'll hold these over to our next meeting? Okay, that's yeah, fine. We'll hold them over. Um, so the first item on our agenda tonight is an extension of final approval for the Taconic Mobile Home Park site plan on Hosner Mountain Road. <coughs> Good evening. Um, you know, we're just uh, still working with the health department. Um, we did get a letter late in November, which I submitted to the board. Uh, unfortunately, with my workload, I haven't been able to address it completely at this point. Um, but we will be doing so shortly. Okay. Any significant changes to the plan that you're expecting, or is it? Uh, not at this point, but the last submission, as I mentioned to the board, we had to uh, redesign the entire inside of the building um, due to a new reviewer within the health department. So right. um, okay. that really delayed us. Okay. But no changes to the outside, no need to go back to the ARB or anything no. like that? We, we initially granted this. We've done three extensions so far. This will be the fourth. I'm, I'm hoping we're at the end of the road at this point. Okay. Okay. Um, what are you asking for at this point? Um, and I know I'm going to, just to get through this process, I'm going to need the 90 days for sure. Okay. Um, I, I liked that you came back and gave us kind of an update halfway through. Okay. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what the uh, sense of the board is, but maybe if we did six months, but ask you to come back in 90 days and just let us know where you are if you're still on track. Right. That'd be great. I agree. Yeah. This, is, this, is, this has been a long term. Uh, right. but the, and also, but this is a tough time of year to get these things done. So. Um, so, do I have a motion for a six month extension and then just provide us a 90 day update? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Yeah. <coughs> okay, the next item on our agenda is an adjourned public hearing for a Bonanno three lot subdivision on Mountain Top Road. Can I under, uh, motion to reopen the public hearing? Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And I understand we're having some AV problems, so do you have a map we can put up for the public? Since we're no, I didn't bring a map. Um, I don't know if there's any. I don't know if there's anybody here to see it. I do have. I do it. Have, have it on my stick. Okay. Yeah. We, unfortunately, yeah, we our laptop's not working tonight. Pam, do we have our larger map from our file? Just bear with us a moment. I want to make sure we put it up on the board. Folks, I guess I, I should have mentioned at the, at the top of the meeting while we're getting the map up here. Um, if anyone is here for the Hilltop Manor um, yeah, DEIS discussion, just to let you know, the applicant asked um, to be taken off our discussion list at the end of the meeting tonight. So we'll, we will have that back on a, on a future meeting, but um, we won't be discussing item number six on our agenda, Hilltop Manor, because the applicant asked us to uh, remove it from the meeting for this time. It has some additional information they want to provide before coming with us.
just give us a quick recap of what you have. Again, since we're not able to put it up on the board, um, and then just let us know where you stand. I know we had a couple outstanding items. The, um, the, the, the project proposal is a three lot subdivision. No, we have to, uh, we have the to three lots are on Mountain Top Road. The parcel is, is on Mountain Top and Old Stormville Mountain Road. It's 13, 13 plus acres. There's about two and a half acres of wetlands on site. Uh, I've met with the I've met with the DEP on site, and we've gone over the the wetlands on site. Uh, there's a there's a current stormwater pollution prevention plan that's that has uh, that has a few comments that need to be addressed. But the comments that need to be addressed also needs to be reviewed by the DEP, which can't be done until I get a negative deck on the on the project. Uh, the outstanding the outstanding item currently is a letter from the DEC stating that the, the, the Indiana bat will have no effect on the project because we do have a hit for the Indiana bat. However, we are at somewhere around 1,100 feet in elevation in the Indiana bat, according to the, according to the uh, New York State Fish and Wildlife, do not roost it, uh, are not known to roost over 900 feet. Okay. And uh, the entire property is up above that yes. elevation? The the lowest the lowest point of the property is nine eighty eight. Okay. So it's, it's substantially higher than the than the nine hundred feet. Um, I was hoping tonight to be able to move on uh, move on and close the public hearing and without having the DEC letter and just to attach. I, after the last meeting, I was uh, I did have a few comments from the DEP on the EAF. I've updated the EAF. However, I haven't dropped it off because I'm waiting for the the DEC letter to to add to it. I could drop it off tomorrow with the with the uh, with the Indiana Bat guidelines say, stating from the Fish and Wildlife Service saying that uh, that it that they're not known to roost at over, elevations over 900 feet. I mean, if the DEC says something different, it is just notes I believe that add on the map and limit the, the time that I can, the trees can be harvested. Okay. Um, Michelle, I know we had tried to reach out to the DEC, no, no luck on getting a letter yet. We haven't gotten a letter, but I did get a verbal confirmation that yes, in fact, they, you know, consider anything above 900 feet, not viable habitat, but I haven't received anything in writing. Okay. And with regard to the SWIFT items, I guess, Joe, is there anything that we should have in hand? now prior to taking any action as far as closing the public hearing that sort of thing? Well, Steve and I had discussed uh, some of our comments and for a while it seemed like he maybe had to at least show the DEP the concept and get their buy-in <coughs> on it, but now they're, so, they're telling him he's got to get his neg deck first, which I think is something they're, they do typically. Okay. Um, I mean, we had we had a couple of comments. None of them are really major. Uh, I guess the one about this, the sizing and the practices and some of the pretreatment things, I think they could all be worked out. He's got enough land to, to work in some additional things if he has to, you know, increase the size or, or you know, add but another no item. no significant change to the plan <coughs> you're anticipating with regard to those changes, just minor? Correct. Okay. Yeah. And Brendan, how about traffic? Anything is with regard to site distance? Are you, are you all set and all? Okay. Um, before we invite public comment, are there any questions or comments from board members? Yeah. Okay. Anything else, um, Michelle from AKRF, or anything else? With okay. Um, do we have anyone from the public here to speak for or against the adjourned public, uh, sorry, the uh, Bonanno Three Lot Subdivision on Mountain Top Road? Okay, um, with that being said, the, the risk you take if we close the public hearing and then so something comes up with the DEC letter or something like that and you have to make a significant revision of the plan is we may have to put you back in public hearing. Okay. Um, which would be re-noticing and all of that to the neighbors. But if if you're confident and that's something you're comfortable doing, I'm comfortable that there's no. As long as the applicant's willing to waive the 62-day time period within which for this board to make a decision until 
the DEP letter uh, comes in. Yes. Okay. Before we do that, I, I'm sorry, there was one point I didn't catch. Uh, when we last saw you, you were uh, still doing percolation tests. How did those all come out? Uh, with, without having the DEP, submitting a complete application to the, to the DEP, um, and actually the snow cover on the ground, uh, I was trying to do everything with one day of a, of a machine being on site and without having, without, without being able to do, have the DEP witness it and with, with having the snow on the ground, the health department wouldn't come and witness it either. So, uh, I, I'm, I've held off on that. I do have, uh, I talked to Joe today. I, I have, I have some preliminary stuff that was done in, uh, by Mr. Barger in, in 1991 when this was this application I believe was in front of the board then as well um, and I've doctored I have a map that's stamped and sealed from him <coughs> that was uh, was septic design it has test hole location and percolation test locations throughout the site it was actually a six lot subdivision at the time um, and they, they showed percolations in the range of anywhere from 10 10 to 25 minutes and um, there was a few, there was a few test holes that indicated water at about three and a half feet, but most of them were, most of them, no water were encountered, encountered on them. So I'm pretty confident that, uh, that our, that our percolation test will go well. Okay. Thank you. So again, understanding that if, if one of the letters comes in and has requirements for you that need to significantly change the plan, you may come back into public hearing. And then also to Tom's point. You understand if it takes more than 62 days, you're waiving that uh, time frame as far as a decision. Yes. Okay. Um, then if the, if the board wants to offer a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And what we'll do is once your letters come in, we would schedule, it for schedule you for decision after we've had a chance to review the letters and whatever adjustments you need to make to the plan at that point. Should I should I hold off on resubmitting the EAF until I have the letter from the DEC or? I would think so. I mean, why would ha you just have to revise it again? I would think. So. I it, it, I think it would just be uh well okay okay I think it would just be adding a letter, but I'll I'll hold on to it until uh until I get that letter. If you prefer to submit it and just have a blank page or something for the letter, and we'll add it in once you receive it, I'm fine with that too. Whatever is. Okay. Whatever works. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next item on our agenda um, are, is the public hearing and a declaration of lead agency for John Jay Gas Station. So before we open the public hearing, Pam, we have all the documentation we need and have no adverse comments from any of the involved agencies as far as lead agency. So do I have a motion to declare lead agency for John Jay Gas Station? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then do I have a motion to open the public hearing for the John Jay Gas Station? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then, Mike, I know this is the first time we're going through this one, so if, and I, I'm sorry we don't have our AV stuff working. Maybe you can just turn the board a little bit so that the public can see. Yep. You have to turn it a lot, but just, just so that it's facing. Perfect. Thank you. I guess what I'll start with is let me do a brief overrun for the, for, the, for the members of the public that are here, and then we'll get into some of the issues and so forth that we've dealt with during the course of this application. My name is Mike Gillespie, and with us tonight here is Brian Cicola, who will be consulting and preparing some plans. Um, those of you who are not familiar with the location, we are actually at the northeast uh, location mm -hmm. of Route 52 and Lake Drive. Um, just to the west of Archway Plaza, if you see the, sign, uh, the, the, the print here on the right, you'll notice Archway on the right and then Lake Drive at 52 in the front. <clears throat> this is a uh, 0.63 acre parcel and most of you know it is basically the abandoned car wash spot. Okay? Um, what the proposal entails is basically a removal of all existing structures on the site. <clears throat> and with that, the installation of a brand new canopy um, in the front 
uh, and a just about a little over 3,000 square foot building in the rear. Okay, and with that is uh, certainly gasoline is going to be served and it's going to be a convenient mart. And we're also proposing as part of this a, um, a drive-through. Okay, with coffee being served. Now, what you see in front of you, tonight, <coughs> you can tell by kind of the, the, the light panel area here. These are the, the structural locations, and then obviously we have the trap circulation in the parking area on the perimeter. But this plan actually represents a number of meetings associated with going back and forth to this board, okay, trying to determine what the best layout of the lot is. There's no surprise. There's no surprise that this is a, 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 a tight lot and a tight uh, location. Um, but um, all things considered, based upon, again, collaboration with this board, felt that this best represents um, uh, the applicant's intent as well as meets um, hopefully most of the needs of the town as well as the board. Um, you'll notice too that there's some work that's been going on at the site. Recently under certain DEC mandate there was a requirement to have the existing tanks removed. Uh, you, you, that, that exists out there today. It's, it's, there's some protective fencing around that hole in the front um, but that is, 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 is proceeding. Okay. Um, so what what, what we are, um, a couple of things that we spoke about at the last meeting, okay? Number one, let's talk about a cross access easement. One of the things that so Mike, the board. Mike, if I can just have you flip to um, the, the proposed plan so that we can. This is actually the proposed plan. That's okay. got the overlay. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, let's get it. Okay. 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 Do you have the one that's the drawing that shows the drive through and everything? I, I'm sorry, I can't see it. I don't have it in front of me. Yeah, it's on there. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Do we have a regular shot though? Got it. Okay. It's hard to tell the difference between the grass and the pavement from where I'm sitting. Yeah. Okay. Do you have like a white background drawing that makes clear? Okay. We don't have a full size one, we just have a right, color one. Fine. Um, yeah, we can throw that up there because I'm sure okay. we can put up the one we had submitted. Sorry. Um, go ahead. Traffic circulation, access, so forth has always been an issue on this, on this project. And as part of this too, there was some thought to try and enhance maybe some of the traffic circulation. Did you want it or did you want it? Mm -hmm. Did you want it? On the board. Want it up on the board. On the, uh, on the archway plaza. Um, the applicant, the owner, approached um, the owner of Archway, and unfortunately, uh, which was really reflected on the latest submittal that we had made, unfortunately we were not able to secure an okay to allow that, for happen, allow that to happen. Now, uh, I think on, on our end, there's certainly still a willingness to be able to incorporate something if it should happen in the future to allow for the interconnection of these sites. And when I say the interconnection, really the, the discussion was along the rear portion mm -hmm. of the site back to here. We have um, the ability to move a tractor trailer to this site. We provided some diagram and layout, in fact, with a town consultant, uh, traffic engineer, um, and shown that that's achievable. And we talked about it the last time related to the, 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 the um, loading and unloading area. We have a dual area on the right-hand side of this building, one for the drive-through, and we have an emergency lane. Um, and what we had discussed at the last meeting was to be able to use that emergency lane during those temporary periods for the purposes of loading and unloading. So that is the, uh, the intent and the plan, and I think we, uh, you know, again, there was some due diligence related to um, trying to obtain that. Unfortunately, we just didn't, didn't come up with it. Okay. Is, you know, I, I remember, I, I think the board all felt that that would enhance both sites. And so it's, it's really a shame. I mean, is there anything that we as a board could do to reach out to Archway Plaza and, and make that suggestion? Because, I mean, Every single car that doesn't come out right there where the John Jay crosswalk is, is an improvement. Right, and I would agree that, and I'm going to be honest with regards to the initial discussions that we had with the owner, seemed to be positive, um, but as it, as it kind of kind of came through, the reality is, is that it just wasn't able to be put together. So, not, not, not based upon an unwillingness on our part. You know. I mean, is, what, is there anything we can do? Well, I think we can make sure that this plan includes the ability to do that in the future. 
and then it's probably not something that you can <coughs> change any site plan without an application before us on, on Archway. So we can prepare for it in the future, but there's probably nothing there. Um, but this board can't contact Archway and say, we think this would be a good idea. Um, I guess, Across Tom, I would defer you. I mean, we don't typically reach out specifically to a well, joint we always contact them to see what their thoughts were on it, you know, to verify, not to verify, but to uh, see if their interest can't be renewed. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. Maybe you give me the contact person. Sure. sure. Okay. I mean, I, when there are students coming out of John Jay, that little square of space is just a disaster mm -hmm. waiting to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, the tractor well, I don't think the intent was ever to funnel traffic through the back of the gas station. It was to give an alternative exit. An alternative exit, exit not exit, to right. funnel traffic through the gas station. <laughs> right. I mean, people are generally going to go out 52 unless they have a reason to go into the gas station. Right, but my point was every single car, every, even one, one or two fewer cars is in the I get it. I just want to make sure that people understand this is not right. a way to funnel traffic through the back of the gas station. It's For me, it was more the deliveries. Right now, yeah, we well, that's vehicles. yeah, it's exactly. Hard. Sometimes, with cars being blocked in and things like that, it would have given them an ability to have a better circulation than try to reverse. Oh, I agree with that 100%. Around. I mean, I don't just, I just want to make sure people understand it wasn't meant, yeah, okay. Lori, that's as a redirection. Thing. That's and I understand your point, Jason. And that, that actually was the crux to really reach out to them initially to try and get better delivery trucks access for them and the guys, like yeah. stuff, so. um, but it would have been a positive, you know. Um, I think the next point to make is probably one that's more of an important point as it relates to maybe some of the people here tonight, but is an integral part of what we're doing here related to the improvement of this site. The intent is to take uh, the existing water line, the Shenandoah water line, that runs along 52 on the opposite side, the south side of 52, or underneath 52 and bring it across the road, okay? Um, we are not allowed to open cut, open trench cut 52 here. It's, 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 it's a high volume road. so. That has to be done in order to serve this site and to allow, hopefully for the potential, to allow to move forward because there's some issues related to this site under the previous owner, related to some existing residences in the back and so forth. So this is going to help with allowing that to happen. Okay. So are you just crossing 52 or are you coming up late? Dry or how far are you going? What we have shown is we've shown coming underneath 52 mm -hmm. and taking the water line and serving it to the rear of our property. That's, that's the, what our plans have, have always shown. Okay. I thought they had a supply line. Nobody can hear anything in this room. I tell John this all the time. You got to talk right into it, Michael. Try it up. Okay. Let me, let's talk about the water again. Yes. Okay. The intent of, of this plan is to bring the water beneath the water line, beneath Route 52 which now is on the south side of 52, across underneath 52, and extend that main, okay, to the back corner of our property. That's what our plans have always shown, and that's where our intent is, okay? We understand that there's some issues related to some homes in the back that currently are under treatment systems. We actually have done some research into that. We understand there's a total of eight homes right now in the rear mm -hmm. that are being treated um, with filter systems. Um, this certainly is a great head start in order to allow that to continue in, in it, or, or to be able to be served. I want to make a point, too, that <clears throat> the owner that we have now, the owner that's making this application, is different than the owner was six months ago, eight months ago, okay? <clears throat> there has been some discussions between the old owner, the new owner, as well as DEC, in order to try and facilitate the ability to possibly serve and extend the water main to serve in the back, okay? Right. There is actually a meeting tomorrow, believe it or not, okay. um, at the DEC with representatives there, and these, some of these discussions are to, going to take place. So, you know, I, I, don't, I think it's been clear in terms of the commitment from the current owner in terms of extending that water main to the back through there, that's, that was never intended as part of this, <clears throat> but certainly there's the ability that that, that may happen in the near future. I just I want to make, make it clear for anybody who's here tonight that thinks that we're going to be extending that water main all the way to the rear 
to serve existing homes that have those existing problems. That's, that's kind of being worked out in the mix right now with regards to the remediation in the previous owner. And as, as we adjourn and continue this public hearing, you'll yeah. be able to give us more information on that as far as exactly what's going to happen and where you're going. But as of right now, you're taking it to the rear of your me. property. Un correct. Unfortunately, because of the timing of this, I wish this meeting was one day earlier because I think I would be able to have a lot more to tell. But that's the way it worked out, and certainly, hopefully, at the next meeting, we'll have more to tell. Okay. I just have a quick question. Uh, are you able to supply the gas station with a well on site? Are we able to? Yes, as I far as your water supply. I would think meeting current separation requirements is related to, um, you know, for public water supply. I mean, we do have a spot, a rectangular spot in the back rear location there, Scott. Mm -hmm. But knowing that how the DEC is in terms of separation distances from septics and wells and so forth, we would be hard pressed. It's a different type of site because we have an existing well out there now. So there's usually there's obviously some willingness to be able to work. And, and you know, provide additional treatment measures and things such as that, because again, being an existing site. But um, that's, that's what I'm asking: whether it's your intention to use your well, or are you intending to connect to the Shenandoah line and get your water from the Shenandoah line? We were intending to connect. Well, that would require the formation of a district, and I don't know if the town would form a district just for the gas station without taking care of the eight homes. Right. Well, we, we I would, I would think that they wouldn't. So. And, and we have actually looked into and, and taken a look at some of the numbers related to Shenandoah in terms of what they currently use. We actually recently had gotten the information related to how many users do have or on filters back there. So I presume that if anything in terms of the dis district expansion occurred, it absolutely would incur that and maybe even more depending on how that worked out. But again, forming the district doesn't necessarily bind to the actual construction of the line in terms of the cost and so forth. And so yes, Mike. Yeah. Um, just because I don't know, the contamination of the eight homes and the filtration systems are the result of. I don't. Do you know? Because okay. I don't. Uh, effectively, as I understand, this station was a contributing cause. Okay. Yeah. There, there is, uh, and I don't want to speak out of terms, but the the previous owner currently now um, pays for originally those filter systems going in as well as the maintenance and, and, and the testing and so forth. So that is an ongoing thing that occurs. Okay, was that the MTBE they used to use in ancient of days? I, I, I can't speak to the actual mm -hmm. MTB. Sorry, I just didn't I know so I thought it was. contamination and so forth, you know. Okay. Um, obviously, Mike will be anxious to understand exactly how that all works out, so we'll, we'll just keep keep on top of it if you once you have documentation if you can bring it in for the file here and we'll, we'll we certainly intend. discuss it when we adjourn we intend to yeah. um, just as, I guess two quick other notes too uh, I know uh, the town traffic consultant has been working um, with our office with Brian looking at counts looking at impacts looking you know we do show some traffic improvements out here and I always have in terms of modifying some of the entrance and exit locations uh, narrowing down winding up um, turning lanes and so forth um, that's still a work in progress. The DOT <coughs> does have this plan, okay? They have not commented on it yet. Um, and we were hoping that, again, we would have something sooner than later, but I'll actually I'll defer to that because we're working with them more direct than we are. But basically what you're proposing is closing one of the Route 52 access easements and have a right in, right out on right. 52. The, and the, then an exit, sorry. The, the entrance location closer to the intersection would be closed on 52. The, the, the access point closer to the intersection of Lake and 52 is proposed to be closed as part of this. What about the Lake Drive? Well, just bear with us, folks. We'll open up for public comments. I'm sorry, but we want to make sure we yes. get your names for the minutes and everything. Um, okay. And Mike, then the station, as proposed right now, is going to have, you have a right in, right out on 52 and two entrances on Lake. Correct. To facilitate if the if someone's using an exit exit escape lane in the drive through and then also for most of the traffic probably to be able to exit if they're going to be headed eastbound. Correct. Okay. It, Lori, it's it's uh it's not just a right in, right right out on fifty two, it's it's a left in also. Left oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Full Thank access you. in, right outs. Thank you. 
Yeah. Correct. The, the, the eight homes that have the filtration systems, they're being maintained by the prior owner of the property? No. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm sorry. I just, okay, cool. the, I, fine. I just, yes. I just, I just like to know the background. Okay. So I'm also curious, I was going to ask Tom next about the uh, remediation law that East Fishkill has and how it applies to this kind of site when you have houses that are contaminated back with filtration systems. Well, the, the uh, special permit application that allows them to, to redo this site requires, number one, that the, there's remediation being done by uh, directive from DEC or the EPA, which there is in the tank cleanup. And it also requires that there be a community benefit from uh, this project, and that's been deemed to be the water supply um, as the town engineer indicated that I, I think it's it's more complicated than we can really get into tonight I think they this applicant is trying to develop a site and would bring over the water main there's the DEC and the prior owner who may bear responsibility or the prior owner may bear responsibility for then going from that point into taking care of the eight homes or whatever okay, it is so the new so owner hopefully would after the, the old D, owner would do. after the DEC meeting tomorrow okay. there will be clarity on that and at the next public hearing that would be available. Thank you. And also we will we are looking at mediation plan in two weeks. It's been designed between my environmental engineer and DEC at the site to clean up almost 30,000 gallons of water every day. I, I'm, I'm committed to that. So you're going to pump in we are well, that's the groundwater the contamination. The groundwater right. Con there's two the parts. Source. There's the groundwater yeah. contamination and then there's the new drinking supply. Right. Is that the work that's being done out there now? Excuse me? Is that no. the work that's yeah, being that done out there now? Yeah, that tank was removed. I guess they started. Yeah, because yeah. the soil aeration. There's a DEC the consent water. order in the file, and it, what the work that's going on there is covered by that consent order right now. Right. Is there anything that's still pending before this board that's slowing those efforts? That's what? I'm sorry. Is there anything that that is part of this proceeding that we could pull ahead to speed those efforts to clean up and remediate that site? Or is that proceeding without incompetence? I, I think it's the, fair to say that it's... it's no, the, the cleanup as by the mediation plans will be ongoing two weeks from now. Designed and just approved by the EC, and we purchased the, we did purchase the equipment. It should be installed within two to three weeks at max. Okay. I think to answer your question, what's happening here with this board as it relates to this site is effectively kind of an independent thing than the, than the consent owner from okay. DEC. So, there's nothing here that's holding that up from moving ahead and getting done what needs to get done to make it right out there is related to that. Okay. But I'm, but I'm worried. Okay. Um, one other legal type question. Is there any kind of uh, bond or fund been set up to maintain these systems and these houses? Well, or from what uh, we, we were made aware of is that there is money that's being held in escrow at the direction of DEC. Okay. And I think that's money that DEC is now going to attempt to resolve the uh, remaining Okay, issue. so they could use that money then for right. supplying the water? That's our from understanding. The head. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Sorry, the dumb questions. I, I need other things made no, obvious. No, it's not, no, it's no. not a dumb question. <laughs> the DEC collected, collected almost 3.5 of a penny from the, every gas sales. It was supposed to go to Superfund to, for this cleanup. Unfortunately, DEC is not using the money for a cleanup. So the homeowners have to call up the DEC and force them to to do what they have to do. But they are collecting the fees every month, every day. Every time you pump gasoline, you're paying for the cleanup. Mike, I know, I know we just covered up the picture, but let's make sure, I want you to walk us through what the building looks like, the elevations, and if you have a picture of the canopy as well. Because part of this is also our hearing for the look and feel of the, the building itself. Hey, Michael, I have a question about the pump configuration. Does that allow for larger vehicles to go through the pumps, like trailer vehicles? and? landscaping trucks and trailers and stuff like that? Um, you know, the, what we've done is we, we've laid out based area. upon parking Clean area, speaking. turning radiuses. We've concentrated more on the tractor Clean trailer, you know, area. aspect and so forth. Uh, you know, I don't, have we laid it down for, for, for guys pulling landscape trailers through? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if we've actually done that. Um, okay. To but use I, the pumps, that's what I'm talking so about. So this is great. Yeah, to physically use them. I think, yeah. I think if you actually they had to use them, you'd have to, you know, you'd have to look for a double like bay that was open like you typically do in any station and have to pull them both. But, but the height of the work. canopy is going to allow it. It's just a matter of whether And getting the to the inside pumps, they're able to do that, maneuver to do that? 
I, I would think so. We can All get right. that on paper for you, so right. so it's clear. Okay. That's just something the FAB brought up. Okay. Just right. take us to the, the building itself, if you would, and uh, if you have a picture of the canopy as well, that'd be great. Otherwise, yeah. maybe we can bring that. Through. What we have here is a front elevation of the drawing, uh, we, or, or of, the, of, the, of the building. What we are doing right now is we are currently in front of the Architecture Review Board. We made one run with them. That was last month. We're in front of them again this Thursday, okay? The, the elevations that you see in front of you reflect some of the concerns and comments that they had related to the building. Um, <coughs> we are also, as again, a part of this, we're, we're proposing a brand new canopy, okay, along the front. You know, I think part of this too with the architecture review board as well is because of you basically have exposure on all sides of this building. Uh, we took the architectural element and ran all the way around the perimeter. Okay, it wasn't just you know we have you know one side or three sides and then we kind of blank out the back like sometimes <laughs> happens. So that was taken into consideration. This is the uh, canopy proposal that's going to sit in the front. Does, does the lighting follow some of the recommendations in the Greenway, or are you doing something different with the lighting? The lighting will be an easy light. Okay. Um, and then coming back, if you just, just walk us through the, the pictures. That I, the first one I know was the front of the building facing 52. Show, show us which side's facing lake, which side's facing archway. Okay. Because it's kind of a, if you can tell from the site plan, it, it's kind of a, a, an oddly shaped building. But what you'll notice here, we have a rear, effectively a rear elevation. But the two points, the, the rear, rear of the building, Effectively, what you're looking at on both the right, left, and sides, elevation, and so forth. Um, but again, you can see it, and, and you can tell by, right, there's the, uh, the drive through window location. Do you have a view that just shows the building from Lake, or? And so this would include the, that's got to be archway, right? And that's going to be your pickup window. There's your left, there's your left side elevation. Questions or comments, other questions or comments from board members? Okay. Brandon, um, Michelle, or Joe, anything we should go over before we open up for public comment? I think we'll just uh, give a, an update of a couple of traffic things. Uh, we are finalizing the larger truck uh, tracking diagrams through the site. It does, it does accommodate a WB62. Uh, off of off of Route 52 and through the site, it, uh, it, it wouldn't it would exit onto Lake Drive. But uh, the only way to access a, the tractor trailer to access would be off of off of 52. Uh, as Mike said, the traffic study is <coughs> in progress. Uh, we are still evaluating some of the data that we have and collecting some additional uh, some additional data. But what we do know at this particular point in time is that the AM traffic, uh, and mainly because it's right near the school, is what is critical at this site. Um, and the critical movement out of here would be the left turn off of Lake Drive uh, in, the, in the AM, would be the, the, the movement that we're gonna look closest at. We're looking at the, uh, the school traffic. Um, we're reviewing and analyzing the site-generated traffic. It's uh, it's a mixed-use facility with a gas station, a convenience store, and, and a drive-through uh, coffee shop. Uh, so it, it's, uh, it, there's not a lot of available data to clearly define how much traffic it generates. So we're taking a good hard look at that. Um, I think that's sort of a, a you know an overview of the the traffic, and you know we can answer any questions when they when they come up. Okay. The uh, the, the uh, as Mike also mentioned. Uh, these plans are at the DOT. Uh, everything the DOT has requested to review is in front of them right now. Uh, they've had it for uh, a good period of time now, a few weeks. Uh, the only information we have from them is that they, it will be reviewed you know, in, in, in uh, a time frame when they get to it, but uh, it, it's there and we hope to see that review shortly in the next, in the next week or two. Are you anticipating, I know it's, you can't predict it, but are you anticipating any issue or do you think this, because it eliminates one of the access points? Yeah, we have met at the site with the DOT permit engineer um, who, you know, who understands the development and, uh, and likes what's being proposed, but it does go back to the, 
the main office in the Traffic and Safety Division for them to take a, a closer look at these commercial developments. But uh, uh, this site, we, uh, I think the, they might, if they ask for more data and they might want to, you know, when the traffic impact study is completed, they're probably going to want to see that to make sure what the impact is, uh, you know, at, at the intersection of Lake Drive and 52. Okay. And any other updates before we open for public comment? I think we are, I mean, our letter was pretty self-explanatory, a lot of clarification and waiting on DOT input on the entrances and the traffic review. Uh, we also had a note about the water line and getting those additional details and the plans have a note about the town, you know, coordinating those details with the town engineering department. Um, I guess uh, as far as the information with the DEC meeting, if we can receive an update on that meeting or possibly even attend I guess we'd like to be able to coordinate that okay. that's not, that's the meeting you're having tomorrow Mike uh, that's the meeting that's happening tomorrow between council for the new owner council for the old okay so okay and if we receive documentation from the DEC or recommendations that sort of thing just let's make sure we get them in Um, what I'd like to do is we'll open up for public comment now, and if we could, um, as members of the public want to come up, we have a sign-in sheet here so we can capture your uh, name for our minutes, so come on up, and more than, if, if there's a few people who want to speak, you can sign up, we'll call you up in the order that you sign up on the, on the sheet. And then when we call your name, you can come right up to the podium. I'm sorry, maybe you can come on out. You were, I know you're the first yeah. one, so. <laughs> okay, sorry. No, no, that's quite all right. Do I state my name? Yes. yes. That okay, my name is Barbara Stuck. Thank I you. live back in the development behind this um, <clears throat> proposal. I have to say it's a very nice looking building, and I'm glad that they're going to be making improvements, but I do have some concerns I, that I hope are addressed at future public hearings. Um, I think this is a very simple explanation of a very complex situation and I think there are two areas of concern that most of us that live in there um, are concerned with but I'm only speaking on behalf of myself okay. um, one is the water issue um, I think it really we really need clarification about where that line is going who it's going to affect how it's going to affect the people that are presently being um, helped or whatever by the previous owner how this another gas station on the corner <coughs> if the first one cause a lot of pollution, what's being done, so that this one does not. And it sounds like you're doing things so that doesn't happen, but I think we need some more clarification. Um, my biggest concerns are the traffic and the safety. Um, I heard you say you did a study and about the traffic at the AM and all of that. That whole intersection now is unsafe with kids coming back and forth from John Jay, uh, people in Dunkin' Donuts, cars going in and out of the gas station. Um, <clears throat> I think that really has to be addressed. They took away the traffic light on Rathel and 52 to get out of our development at certain times of the day. That was how you did it. Now that traffic light isn't there. Certain times of the day, if you want to go, <clears throat> you want to go left, you could sit for 10 minutes. Um, I spoke with the Department of Transportation, and the man told me that when the West Complex is reopened, maybe they will put that light back, but that it's safer now than to have people stopping on 52. That makes no sense to me. Um, <clears throat> I think we need to know how many pumps are going to be there. I mean, I heard a lot of talk about entrances and exits and Lake Drive. It's a zoo now. Um, I think it really has to be addressed specifically and carefully. I can't believe that I'm shaking. <laughs> um, to make it safe. To make it safe. Because the way it sounds now, <laughs> doesn't really sound very safe to me. I mean, it looks lovely, and that's a huge improvement, but also those of us who live in there have to get in and out of the development, and it's almost impossible now, and it's really not safe now. So if you add all of this, I really think it has to be really looked at and analyzed carefully, or it's going to be a disaster, and it's not going to be safe. You mentioned um, certain times of the day where you can wait up to 10 minutes. Do you have a feel for what times? Is it in the mornings, in the evenings? Are there different Between times? 4 and 6 at night, it's terrible. When John Jay is getting going in, or I mean, 
arriving or dismissing, it's terrible. In the morning, there's a lot of traffic. And if they reopen the West Complex, that's going to bring even more traffic into that area. So I really think traffic is traffic and safety, not just flow. I mean, you can easily figure out how it's going to flow, but is it going to flow safely? That's my concern. Because I have a concern now because the kids cross in the traffic light where you're supposed to stop the light screen, and they cross anyway. So that whole area really is not very safe now. And I don't know if going into Archway Plaza is the answer. I'm not a traffic person, but. What do you think of the idea of the, the, the exit of Archway cutting across? Like, I don't know if that's, a, I don't know if that helps. The point where it would go, so it would just go, so you would, so in other words, the cars in the back of Archway would have the option of going out to the lake and then coming, yeah, coming out to Lake. That's just putting more traffic on Lake. So I don't really know. I don't know if that's um, safer or not. I don't, I don't have enough understanding of how that works to know if that's a good option. Um, and I'm not so sure why we need a drive-through, because sometimes when you have drive-through, I know there's a gas station and a, and a store like this down near Graymore on Route 9. At certain times of the day, it is horrendous. And if you have a, I don't know, it just seems like an awful, I mean, it's a lovely building, but it's an awful lot going on there, and there's a lot going on there already. If they do it right and really think about safety, I think it could be okay. But if not, I don't really know. So thank you for, for listening. How many pumps are supposed to be there? Four pumps. And how many hours would the gas station be open? Just so you could have. So with, with Four pumps, so it's eight filling spots because each pump. Oh, has eight filling spots. spots. That's right. right. Four pumps, eight filling spots. There's currently three. But you might want to talk three. about okay. the, uh, the rotation of the pumps. Right? Well, originally, when we proposed the pumps, uh, we had them slanted in toward uh, the building. We did a couple of iterations with the board, and now they're actually lined up facing. So when you pull in, you're facing the building. You're facing. It's the pulling in and out that really is going to be tricky because even people coming out of that gas station, if they want to go left, how are they going to do that? I don't know. It's, they have to exit onto Lake. You know, they have to exit onto Lake, and then when they get to the end of Lake, they're not going to be able to get out either because we're going to be sitting there waiting to get out. So I don't know. I just don't know. So these are things that I think in the future you have to look at. I appreciate you giving us the times where you're seeing the backup now because one of the things we've been looking at is how, how do we assess the traffic in that area. We've been taking some traffic counts and things, but we want to make sure we capture Brendan. I'm just, um, we've, we've got three, the arrival and dismissal of John Jay and now and 4 to 6 p.m. So if we're taking additional counts. And I also think that coming, Oh, at lunchtime, too, they're reminding me it's a mess. It's a mess a lot of the day. And also coming east on 52 to come to make a left into Lake Drive would be good to have a turning lane there. I asked the DOT about that. They said there wasn't enough room. There are yellow lines there that, all, that everyone uses as a turning lane. So I don't know if they need more line for turning lanes than yellow lines. But I think the, the room is already there. That might alleviate some of it. But I don't know how you're going to get all these people in and out because getting in and out now is not easy or safe. So thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What, we're, what I want to make sure we do is let's have you come up. Yeah, and well, I think, well, that's my husband, and we've talked. Okay. Per, what? We, well, we've talked. How would you control the traffic? Would they put another traffic light there? I don't know, because they turned off the one at Rathel, so there's really nothing, there's nothing to help the traffic, especially if it's going left onto 52. And Archway Plaza is already a zoo getting in and out of, and then the kids are coming out of the high school. You really have to look at that. Just a couple of things to add to some of your points. Is Good. That's Thanks. certainly something that will be looked at to be evaluated is the warrants for a traffic signal. Um, we have requested uh, accident data, uh, both from the East Fishco Police Department and from the New That's York State DOT, to, uh, to take a look at uh, accidents, what type of accidents, pedestrians, and, and so forth. We, ha we don't have that data yet, but we will get it and analyze it. Um, we have performed some manual turning counts where we actually were out there and physically counted cars in the AM peak periods from 6.30 to, to 9, and the PM periods from uh, four to six, 
Uh, we also put machine counters out. I uh, saw the machine okay, counter. And we're, gonna, and we're actually getting more data now, too, because actually in these winter months, it's difficult to get data because every time it snows, we have to run out and pull, pull the loops out. So we're still in the process of getting some additional data at different locations so that we make sure that we have understand the traffic for the full day, not just in those hours where we manually count. I think those are good things. It's yeah, good to know that you're that looking are, at As I said, it is, uh, you know, we are in the process of looking at all that data, and as we look at it, we realize we might need some more data, and that's what we've been doing, getting some additional So data. if there are more public hearings, we will be notified? I mean, not notified, well, you'll put up one of those. I have a suggestion about the signs, too. The signs that you put up for the public hearings, you have to stop driving to read them. And the one at the gas station, the way it was positioned, the way it was angled, you really couldn't read it unless you stopped the car. Okay. Um, the, the way it was angled on the corner, we'll you know. We'll ask the applicant to adjust that. You know, so. And but but just, so, just, so, just so you know, what will happen is tonight, we'll, we typically wouldn't, wouldn't close a public hearing. We're still collecting a lot of information. So we'll, we'll set an adjourn date tonight so you'll know before we oh, okay. leave tonight what the next. I think you need much more information on the water situation, too. You know, I think it's, it's all good, but it's not really specific enough. And there are a lot of people that are concerned about what's going to happen to their water. So thank you for listening. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you for coming. And thanks for gathering data. At That's one good of the too. earlier meetings, didn't someone make the statement that this wouldn't generate additional traffic on 52? It would just be, it would allow gassing up at that location, but not increase traffic on the road. Or is it, my recollection? That seems uh, impossible. It's a, it's, a, it's a combination. Because okay. it's a gas station, convenience store, and a drive-through facility, a lot of the, the generated traffic on the site would be from passerby traffic. So you're not necessarily putting, but that's part of the traffic. Another part of it is you will always generate some traffic. So part of it would be passerby traffic. Uh, developments of this type, it's often, you know, more than 50 percent, 50, 60 percent of the traffic is from passerby, and the, re the remainder of it is, is generated, you know, that comes to that site for that. So, so, you'd be, uh, that so you're use. saying that if you took the traffic situation as it is now, at the peak hours, you'd add about 40 percent for generated traffic to, that would not otherwise be there? Yes. Yes and no. Uh, I mean, it, it, I mean, that that's the concept. But the, the actual specifics and the percentages, uh, they they vary even based on uh, you know the, the type of uh, the type of use. How like a, a drive-through has a, it has actually a higher percentage <coughs> of passerby, you know, uh, a higher percentage of passerby traffic than a gas station convenience store. So it's sort of a you know you have to do a composite of all that to come up. And, and I couldn't tell you that it's forty percent, but there is some percentage that is going to be site generated traffic and there's going to be uh, some percentage which a, ma a majority of the traffic would be not generated traffic but it's going to be passerby traffic but, but it's it not going to be in passing in by it's going to be going in and out in and out right. and it is going to go into the that's site the difference no i know what that means but that means, make but a special trip go, go to that direction drive no i understand that but shouldn't be talking. <laughs> Honey, you can't talk. If you don't mind, just add your husband's name. Next okay, I'll go name put his name with it. And I'll, I'll sit down. One suggestion I would make is that this be over there, so that when someone is making a presentation to you and we're listening, we could all hear. Because in all honesty, we are older, but I couldn't hear a lot of what was said. And that's not fair to him either. Or if you had a microphone that you could stand there, that's just the teacher in me says. <laughs> If you want us to hear, we have Thank to be you. able to hear. Well, and, okay. and normally, too, we have the plan up so some, we can yeah. use a laser uh, pointer and we, we can talk into the mic. We're just a little bit with the AV out. This okay. Time. Thanks. But, but thank you very much for the comments. And, you know, I've always thought Mike would make a good lounge act walking around the microphone. Mm -hmm. yep. You have to go there? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sir? Sure, we did. Your, your you husband. signed in. The I didn't hear the comments you made about two years ago. I, I just heard something about Just to clarify, we're, we're collecting traffic data in counts right now. So right, but uh, just to, just to make a, to clarify that point, there is. You, you count the traffic that's out on the roadway network now, 
and you and there's a portion of it that's newly generated traffic that gets added in and ev even if let's just say there was no gas station or no development there and this was being proposed entirely brand new we we have mechanisms and there's uh you know there's studies and manuals that tell you what a development what type of development how much traffic would generate oh, okay. so we're u we're using that data um you know for, for specific for developments of this type okay thank you uh, I'm Alan Kaladner. I live at 11 Circle Drive. First of all, thank you for taking, getting this property cleaned up. Thank you. Uh, I have some serious concerns about two, two issues. One, the water. The owner that the proposed or new owner bought it from polluted the land with faulty equipment. We were told by the town that that would be cleaned up by the prior owner. We are now going into a third owner, and it's still not being cleaned up whether it's the DEC or the EPA, we don't really know. We were told by the town that they were going to bring water and feed the entire dis and create a district back in Lake City. That has not happened. I am not one of the 11 homes, but we did have uh, tests going on for a number of years because the plume moves. And once they disturb the property, nobody knows where that plume is going to go. And it, well, yes, it was MTBE. Uh, Cutting through to Archway doesn't solve any problem. All it does is push more traffic out onto Lake Drive. I would recommend anybody on this board to go take a look at what goes on there in the morning. You have students going through that closed car wash area, coming out onto Lake Drive in order to make the U-turn to then make the right into the school. So it is a cluster of just people going in every which way, in every direction, if you're going to cut cut the entrance into the gas station down to one, they're going to go in and they're going to do the U-turn onto Lake Drive. However, you're now going to have cars sitting on Lake Drive trying to flip into the drive-through that we've just now heard about. There was never any discussion of any kind of drive-through being contemplated for this site. So that's going to create more traffic coming into Lake, making a right into the property, getting in line to sit there waiting to get their cup of coffee. There's serious concerns of throwing more and more traffic into Lake City. What you're also going to see is people now go through Rothel, come down Birch, and, and cut through the parking lot and park in our neighborhood. So there's a whole host of concerns regarding traffic flow. And I, I disagree with you that you can have an accurate count when there's no activity on that property today. Because two years ago, it was twice as bad. So without knowing the traffic flow and the amount of kids and traffic that are going in there, I think just because you have other, other, um, trying to, uh, other studies that have been done, this is a unique parcel because there's one way in with four entrances and exits off the site. The other issue we now have is now you're going to have people coming into the old Robert Mark building, which is the professional building, coming in off of Lake, and they circle in to come through the back of that property and use that property as a cut through to come out onto Lake. So you have all of this traffic coming into one road where it's impossible to get in or out in the morning, during lunchtime, when the school is out, and then when IBM closes up. You also have activities and, and things going on at the school during, during the evening. Uh, a 24-hour gas station is news to everybody in the, city, in the area. Uh, they had always closed at 8 o'clock, so what's that going to mean for people that would typically not not be stopping, what's that going to do for crime or drive through or pass through into our neighborhood? We're somewhat secluded. There's one way in, one way out. And uh, the, the, the concern with Rothal now is that I have no way to get out of my neighborhood. I can make a right. I can do a, a, an illegal U-turn into the old IBM site in order to head back east on 52, which you have to do four or five times a day. So we, there's a ton of traffic <coughs> concerns. but. Thank you for buying the property and fixing it up. I want to get that clear, that it's a mess. So thank you. Al, 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 yeah, I have a question. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. You made a comment about people parking and then walking into your neighborhood. Yep. What? They park behind the station. They park behind the Robert Mark building. They were parking on Birch and down Lake, but the town came in and put up signs. But you still have cars all through this area behind Archway. Behind the old Zamarios, students. students. Students, okay. So, do you think by making this configuration, is that going to help it? It's going to hurt. It worse? It's going to just create more. It's just, it's going to become. Have you ever seen the clover leaves in Los Angeles? Mm -hmm. That's what this is going to turn into. 
with just people going in and but out of today, all entrances. But today you have more entrances and exits. But you don't have an active property. You There's will, nothing. He can open that up as an active property. There's nothing going on there right now. Right now, but right. he can reopen it as a gas of course. station today. We hope he does. And the car wash. And the car wash also. Nobody's stating that. The traffic flow with pushing all your, all your traffic out on the lake won't work, especially so with a drive. Would you like him to leave all of those ex entrances and exits open? I'd like him to close today? the ones on lake, but that's not going to happen. I think you, you will lose your hangout to the mechanic every day for the six hours a day. Maybe that's your problem. No, nah, he works on my car, but I don't hang no, out with I him. I see you every day at the gas station with my tenant. No, you don't. Because you hate to see the tenant going out. Absolutely not. And you can so, talk to Ray because I haven't been in there. I, I have not been in Ray's shop oh, since okay, May. Okay. Play those games. Okay. All right, folks, folks. Is there anybody else on our list? Or is there anyone else who'd like to speak? Susan? Hi, I'm Susan Kaladner. I live at 11 Circle Drive. Um, just to add a couple of things, did I hear mention of tractor trailers somewhere in there? What the capacity of tractor trailers? What would what are they there? That, that the well, gas station would be able to accommodate for one. Yeah. Excuse me. Fuel delivery for one usually would be a tractor okay. trailer. Okay. Well, right. Possibly um, there's a convenience store on the site. I'm not sure. So they're talking. You're talking about tractor trailer traffic as well. In there, I mean, I understand deliveries for delivery. Just for delivery. So the gas correct. station itself will not accommodate tractor trailers or it'll, it'll, big trucks. It'll accommodate the tractor trailer movement through the site. For deliveries. For deliveries. It's not a truck stop. It's for deliveries. Do I think fuel deliveries we outline were once or twice a week off peak hours, and I think the convenience store will punish was once or twice a week trying to do off peak hour deliveries. So those tractor trailers several times a week would also be exiting out onto Lake Drive? The problem with them, with the tractor trailers exiting onto Lake Drive is that they're not most likely going to be able to make that turn. I mean, it's, it's a narrow road. What we've done is, and, and, and Brandon from Hudson Valley Engineering can speak to it, mm -hmm. we've actually overlaid, or we actually have raised templates that you can develop on CAD, technically. And you can actually swing the tractor trailer through the site. And that's why, if you look at this entrance in the rear and the entrance right here, is a little bit wider. So they allow you to start to swing inside the site. And then you can, by the time you hit Lake Drive, you just the confines of the pavement. So in addition to the, the additional traffic, that will be forthcoming. We will also have tractor trailer traffic. And, and please keep in mind, students from the school are driving in and out at all hours of the day and the evening. And they are students, they're not, you know, I have some myself, they've you know, had some myself years ago, but they're not the most aware drivers. And <coughs> that is a very big, it's already very, very difficult to get in and out with the traffic coming out of the gas station and people making a right or a left onto Lake Drive, where the people coming, making a left coming out onto Lake Drive from the gas station don't realize that there are cars coming in onto Lake Drive from 52, west on, you know, on 52 making that right. So it's already a difficult situation where the person on 52 who's trying to get into Lake Drive has to stop and wait for the, the driver to come out of Lake Drive. So that's going to be another issue. And just one other thing I want to bring up is the issue of the darkness. There are certain times of the year when, when the kids are going to John Jay, it's pitch black in the morning. So it's just something else to keep in mind. I mean, I am, again, I'm, I'm very glad that I, I like the plan, I like the building, I think it's you know, really nice that something nice is going to be going in there, but the traffic is truly going to be a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. So um, the drive-through, well, like I said, I, I don't see any positive outcome 
in terms of the traffic situation there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Someone else on our list? Yeah. Okay. No, if you want to speak, up. come on up. I'll just have you sign in to our uh, on our clipboard, and you can come right up to the podium. Thank you. My name is Marge Horton, and I've had the pleasure of representing these people that live in Lake City since April of 2002 to the county legislature. My husband, Bob Horton, represented them eight years before I did. I just wanted to give you a little information about the water contamination. These people have been very patient. They've gone through several owners of the gas station, and congratulations to you, because you have cleaned up that area. Uh, I also question the 24-hour, not a gas station being open, because there might be a night that I come home and need gas in a gas station. I live off Palin Road. But these people have gone through so much with the water contamination, and they've had promises, but no delivery. They, you know, when I first came in, I think I was there about two weeks, Barbara, when uh, I called the DEC. They're rude, they're arrogant, they don't want any questions, and then they don't want to give you answers. And they are going to need clean water that any of you, and I know, Russ, I know that you're having a problem with yours, I know that. But any of you would want to go home and drink clean <laughs> water and not worry about, are your children going to be sick in the future? Are your grandchildren going to be born with problems? This can't happen. This is the United States of America. We're all entitled to clean water to drink. I, my question, because I know how these things sometimes end, if the pipes are going to be coming across 52, under 52, and the water's coming from the Shenandoah Road site, who's going to pay for the water? If these people get water, who's going to pay for it? Because I know for a fact that some of the people living down in that Shenandoah Road Superfund site were, I'll put it nicely, outraged by the price of the water. So this is something else to perhaps think forward, because I don't know that all of you know how long this problem has been. And yes, thank God we don't put MTBE into the gasoline anymore, but that's there. That's there for a long time. It just doesn't disappear. Thank you very much, and thank you for all the attention that you've paid these people at this hearing, because that doesn't always happen, and it did tonight. So thank you very much. We thank you for coming. Okay. Is there anyone else here who would like to speak for or against our John Jay gas station application? Okay. Um, Mike, come on back up. Just a couple of things I, I want to make sure we, we clarify. I know you'll get back to us on exactly what's going on with the water, so we know that'll be a, a future meeting. Yep. Um, with regard to the, the new gas service at the site, um, is there something you can share with us, if not at this meeting, maybe at the next one, just to clarify the, I mean, I'm assuming <coughs> no regulation requires double, double hull tanks and things like that, just to give us some confidence that there's going to be um, some testing there and making sure that the new tanks going in for the gas delivery are appropriate and not leaking, that sort of thing. To, to go without There's a saying, lot of regulation. To go without saying, obviously, anything new that gets installed will meet present day requirements. But what we'll do is, as part of our next submittal, we'll give you some backup details and so forth in terms of what those those parameters and so forth are to give you a level of comfort and, and, and provide it of record for the public. So. Okay. T Tom? Uh, I'm sorry, I thought, the, thought you were done. No, just, just a couple more. And then also, as far as the um, as far as the use of the site, I just want to clarify, because I know we, we, were, we talked about tractor trailers. 
the, the pumps themselves, if a tractor trailer needs gas, is this going, is, is a tractor trailer going to be able to pull up to this gas station and, and fill up their own gas tank, or is this just tractor trailers for deliveries at the site? Okay, so we don't have the higher canopy that you would need for a tractor. This is going to be a standard. Well, this, this may have a little bit of a higher canopy just to swing right now the way we have it to possibly swing in front of the building. Okay. But not to stop and fill, so it's not supposed. It's not intended to be. I think you said it's not a truck stop, but I just want to be clear. It's also not intended to provide fuel to tractor trailers. This well, is just there, tractor right? trailers for but delivery. There's a, there's a diesel there. That gas station almost sold diesel. Not a tractor trailer will stop there. It's for cars, right. or for landscapers. Yeah. Somebody have a landscaper. Right. Pickups, you know, that the right. intent is certain. That it's it's I mean, not set up for a tractor the trailer to pull up. Designed, it's not designed for a tractor trailer. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that was clear because we were kind of talking about both. So, thank you. Um, and then, Brendan, you'll you'll take care of just looking at the times of day, as mm -hmm. as we've heard now from the public with the the times that are at issue. And are we also doing the counts on the other roads that are the outlet for this subdivision, or are we? I'm not we'll sure it's necessary, <coughs> but I, I know that with the light not being taken out up by the bank branch there and. It, we haven't counted that at this point, but uh, we'll take a look okay. and, and see if it's warranted. Okay. Right. Okay. And then, Mike, to clarify, it is 24-hour operation for both the gas station <coughs> and the convenience store drive-through, or is it, are some of them intended to have other hours of operation? The, the intent was, to, and this, the site operates as a whole, so the intent was whole. for 24-hour. So one of the things I think we'd like to see then in the future is to understand the lighting plan, how, what that looks like on site. Um, I understand the canopy is going to have the LEDs full cut off, but just show us what the lighting plan looks like around the rest of the site. Um, we also had some mention of students that may be um, coming through the site at, at different hours. So if we need to just take a look at how pedestrians will walk from the back to the front, or I know you've got employee parking in the back, but. Um, if we think there's going to be a common access there, let's just make sure we're hopefully putting something in the plan that allows that as safely as possible. Not that we can guarantee students will follow that plan, but we can at least provide something that looks decent. If anybody concerned about 24 hours of drive through you'll be able to close it down at 11 or 12 p.m. Okay. I have no problem closing it at 11 or 12 p.m. Okay. In the evening, but not at the shop. Okay. Uh, any other any other comments from board members or anything else I missed in the? I just would like to, to clarify something. <coughs> this would be part of the Shenandoah water supply system. If, if their plan comes back if from the DC yes. that's acceptable to the town board, right. then the town board would consider establishing a water district that would allow the the water to be installed. But we don't have those details, and the, the presupposition here is that the plan is going to encompass a resolution for uh, minimally those who are now being treated or filtered their water and that the line underneath 52 to the back of the property would be sufficient to service a larger area because that has always been the first key thing that you need to do is to get the water source. But none of those details have been given to the town. We've had discussions you know, from them. They've indicated that. I understand they have to go through the DC thing, and I'm sure by the next public hearing or so, we'll have a better handle on it. Because the, the comment I wanted to make was, the way things are now, they have wells with filtration systems that are paid for by DEC. Right. If the water line goes under 52 to the back of the property, let's assume the town picks up the cost of running the pipes. No, no, you, no. No? This is the, the, the pipes to take care of those folks who are on filters are going right. to be borne by the responsible party which is the prior owner of the property. Okay. And now, that is a DEC enforceable law. Okay. They have money in escrow. They do whatever they do. Those folks should not pay a nickel to be connected for the water supply. Okay, so connection also would be part of the DEC model. Correct. Now, when they come Just like when the EPA did Shenandoah, the full cost of all the pipelines and the connections right into the basement of the house, was paid for by IBM under the, the consent order with the EPA. Okay. 
that the only thing that the owners that currently pump and have paid for filtration then would pay for is the actual water usage, right. which would be comparable to what Shenandoah is paying now, right. which is large. I just thought we were to address that since right. you brought that up. But they would pay. And I wanted to get it clarified as to who pays for what. Thank you. I just think we're still waiting to see, though, what the actual plan comes back. There's the DEC involved in that. So as soon as we have more information, I think we'll go further with that discussion. Yeah, but about. it's going to at least involve the homeowners in paying comparable water costs at best case to what they're paying in Shenandoah now. It's just when I add, the, I, the cleanup is going to be at the gas station. We're going to cut the source by 80% of the polluted underground water. We put an immediation plan over there. We're going to take all the bad soil out of there. That should reduce the level of the polluted water un underground. But we have, we have a similar situation in Tano High Park. Some houses was polluted. The town came in, put the water line, they hook up everything with the DEC's money. Then DEC went after the party who caused it and the residents didn't pay a penny for it. Basically, I hooked up six houses myself. I was responsible for six houses. I have one gas station local. But the DEC picked up and went after the source. The same situation is here. I'm bringing the main line across the street. It's a matter of liability issue for the future. The previous owner, have, he's obligated to bring the water line to the houses. And, and whatever lawsuit, if somebody got sick and everything, they have to go after him. So it's, it's, a, it's a legal issue more than the water line. That's why I asked Tom. <laughs> and tomorrow we have a big meeting. My attorney, Putini's attorney, with the commissioner of the DEC, there's a meeting tomorrow over the liability issue. That's my understanding with MTBE and contaminations is water soluble, and which means you yeah, virtually can't get rid of it. It just keeps diffusing and diffusing and diffusing. No, I think I, you're putting in a filtration. Well, first of all, there's a, there's a filtration right now at the plaza pumping 30,000 gallons a day. We add in another one, it pumps 30,000 gallons a day. So between both of them will be 60,000 gallons a day to be filters through the system. And at the same time, when we dig underneath the canopy, the whole, most of the pollution right now indicated underneath the car wash. My intention to take the car wash off and get to the source, clean up all the bad soil and get it to the landfill, that should reduce it from my previous stations I did between 70 to 80 percent. Car wash pollution shouldn't be MTBE. Well, it's not from the car wash, from the gasoline was, it's not, from the gas, it's really oh, the tanks. The travel okay. from the tanks was leaked. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Why is there a question or no? We haven't adjourned yet. If you want to come back up, that's fine. The water is being filtered. Where is that filtered water going? Back in the ground. What happened to carbon? The gasoline comes out of the water from the underground water to carbon. Then we, we dispose the carbon out of the site. And where does the water then? Come on up to, to we can't hear you. Thank you. For years because of that gas station and I think IBM has a right to dump into Gildersleeve Brook also. That pond, I don't care how cold it gets, never freezes. When I moved in there in 1971, the kids used to ice skate on it. Okay. You can go over there, remember a couple weeks ago, all those zero degree temperatures we had for a week and a half? Not a speck of ice on it. Now, it's something. It's acting like an antifreeze and keeping that from freezing. Okay. And all that stuff is from that gas station and from that car wash. Okay. Just can we just capture your name for the minute? Robert Suck. Thank you. I think it's been made abundantly clear, and I think it's that there's issues regarding contamination out there. So, okay. All right. Um, I know we have the next public hearing will be the Hopewell gas station, but Mike, if we can just um, talk about adjourn dates. I know, Brendan, you need some time for the traffic. I'd like to have a little more of the traffic information nailed down. Sure. Um, Mike, after the meeting tomorrow. It, I'm assuming you're going to have a couple follow-up meetings to figure out what you're doing with the water plan. I'd like us at our next uh, meeting to be able to have a little bit more understanding of where, what we're proposing for the water. So how much time do we need for that? Well, I just want to say something about the water. The water is out of my control, and it's not the town control. It's between DEC, it's, it's a DEC and, a, and the health department. 
Okay, it's something I cannot control it. I, I promised this time we'll put a part of the site back. I will bring the water line to the property line. But the quality of the water, hooking up the water to the houses, I cannot promise. That's a DEC issue, and it's a big lawsuit around it. And they, they're holding a lot of money on the guy and the previous Putini for, the, for this purpose. Okay. And what's gonna happen tomorrow, I hope the outcome is, is good for everybody. Because I want water from the gas station. Because I don't wanna pay for the purpose. So is the previous owner, which is paying at least 30 to 40,000 a year to the DEC to maintain these filters. I'm sure he don't wanna pay it. Okay. Because those filters cost about $550 a month to monitor it. Either DEC or somebody's paying for it, for the eight or the 10 houses. Okay. So they're paying fifty five to 6000 a month. Okay. We're sitting here February 5th. March. March. You're going to start looking around to get your people. I think in order to get the materials in on time, be able to have enough information. I don't want to go through a number of iterations here. I'd like to have answers the next time we come back. And I think over the next few weeks, we should be able to get some clarification on that from DOT, DEC, things such as that. So, I mean, you're looking at the 2nd or the 16th. Those are your dates. Um, for March, it's I think it's it's the same dates as February, right? So it should be the fifth and the nineteenth. April. April. April? Oh, I'm April. Sorry. Yeah, April. April. Excuse me, April second and sixteenth. You're right. Um, Brendan, how does it sound for traffic? I want to make sure that you've got. Yeah, to I, I, I don't think the do. I think we can um, we can certainly get through the uh, the traffic canal as part of it. I think the DOT is a little bit of a wild card because I, I really think it's important that they get their initial review uh, under their belt. Uh, so I definitely would, but we're talking uh, a month and a half, right? April 2nd would be seven weeks or so. Seven weeks. Seven and a half weeks. I, 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 I have to believe that that's enough time. Okay. Because, I mean, it's been in front of them now for almost a month. Um, right. right. We kind of, so. when we had gotten out of this last meeting, actually, that information was gotten to them pretty quick. So they're, they're, they're hanging on to it. So. Okay, so April 2nd? Seems reasonable. Okay. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn the John Jay gas station so public moved. hearing to April, April 2nd? Second. Yes, so moved. Second. Thank second. you, John. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. The next John. item on our agenda Plus. is um, the declaration of lead agency the and a public John. hearing for the Hopewell gas station on Route 82. Can we have everything we need to declare lead agency for the Hopewell gas station? <coughs> Any adverse comments from all the agencies? Okay, so do I have a motion to declare lead agency for the planning board on the Hopewell gas station? I have a motion. I have a second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 And do I have a motion to open the Hopewell gas station public hearing? So motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. You didn't want to get into it that way. Right. So fo okay. folks, that were, folks that were here for the John Day gas station, you hear April 2nd will be the next meeting where we hear this application again. Thank you. Mike, yeah. oh, good. What was their comment? It's well, ruining the landscape. Uh, it's it's not, it's not, I'm sorry, we're just we're picking up your conversation on the mic. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, they do. Hope all filling station. Um, what we have uh, at the intersection of Route 376 and Route 82, uh, we have the existing filling station that resides down there. Um, property is is. is uh, just over about a half acre in size. And what is part is, is proposed as part of this proposal, uh, a little bit different than the previous proposal, uh, mm -hmm. is, is a modification um, of the site. Effectively, the canopy that sits there now is proposed to remain. 
All right, whereabouts on the previous one that was proposed to be reconstructed. The existing building that does reside out there now is proposed to be removed and replaced with a new building of approximately 2,300 square foot size. Um, the new building will effectively be pushed toward the rear of the building into the corner of the property, if you recall. This proposal also was subject to a few iterations, largely related to the, to the building in terms of its size and location <coughs> and so forth. So the plan that's before us again tonight is something that, that was looked at um, through a few course of a few meetings with, uh, with this planning board. Um, and, uh, and, and here we are. Uh, the use, there is no drive-through proposed as part of this uh, proposal. Um, it is going to be convenience store, um, food mart type use. The, um, the plan that we have shown right here, if you recall the last time we've been before this board, um, we were looking at it actually uh, in regards to the access a couple of different proposals. And the one that we show here for on the front of the board actually shows a new access, single lane, one lane access coming in off of three, Route 376. And we had always proposed the intersection closer to 376 and 82, some modifications. But effectively, we had one plan with that one-way access, one plan without. Okay? When we circulated for the lead agency, we provided those agencies both those plans and kind of a blurb about you know, why we, we were providing two different plans. We, um, we have also submitted to DOT. These, these plans, uh, from a time perspective, are following the same time frame as the, the John Jay Station. Um, we have not yet gotten. Uh, something back from DOT related to their input on this access drive. They've had it just again just as long as the other. So hopefully over the next course of the next hearing we, we will hear something from them. Um, again, I'll let, I'll let that Brandon speak to some of the traffic uh, related um, circulation issues and so forth. Um, at the end of the day, this is probably more of a straightforward application. Um, we are uh, planning on tying into uh, the sewer if, it's already been done, and obviously we have central water on, on this site. One of the things, uh, differently than the other site, we are proposing on increasing some of our nonconformities related to our setbacks. And the reason is, is because we kind of like a pie-shaped corner parcel here, it made sense. We kind of had some, let's call it, dead space behind the building. We take that building and push it toward the back corner of the rear. And with that, we are currently in front of the Zoning Board of Appeals seeking certain variances, area variances. We've been in front of them once. And we will back in front of them a week from tonight in this room for a, uh, for a public hearing. Um, I will tell you that I think I can confidently state that the comments and, and feedback that we got from the zoning board was, was positive. Um, again, I don't want to speak on behalf of them in terms of whether those variances would be granted, but it seemed to be a, a positive meeting um, in terms of why we were looking for the, the variances we were and so forth. Uh, we also, as with the other project, went in front of the Architectural Review Board. Um, we've held some of the kind of the same architectural elements that you saw from the previous station. Some of the colors have changed, but down below here reflects some of that uh, or reflects the elevations to date. We've resubmitted these. We're going to be in front of them on Thursday night of this week, and hopefully we can wrap those up, um, those elevation approvals. So effectively, that's, that's, that's the, the, the context of this proposal. Um, Gotten any feedback in the with or without the, uh, the ingress from 376? From from the DOT? Mm -hmm. From from any of the, the groups? So I saw something from <coughs> county planning that wasn't so positive. But. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I saw, I, as part of the circulation of this project and the fact that we're sitting on a state highway, this has to be referral to county planning, county department of planning and development. I believe. I, I, got a, I, I saw their letter today. They're not overly enthusiastic related to this additional Because it cuts the landscape strip. Yeah. Is it the loss of landscaping? The landscaping, and it also cuts the sidewalk. They feel people will have to cross on the sidewalk to cross over. But they left it to your uh, eminent decision. That's not true. Okay. Mike, from the DOT perspective, um, the main regional office, Traffic and Safety, has not uh, offered any comment yet, but the permit engineer um, has reviewed the site, and uh, he is in favor of the access on 376, but he's not the ultimate decision maker at the DOT. So. Okay. I was going to say, <coughs> the other groups, I mean, let's not forget, the reason why is because of the <coughs> proclivity to Arc, try to arc that turn coming out of there. I, 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 since we've started talking about it, 
I've seen it happen a couple of different times of people, you know, making that right hand turn and then trying to make an immediate right hand turn in the station and the guy behind him. Boom. Thank you. Sorry. Um, other than that, with regards to issues, um, again, I think, you know, speak to some of the traffic and comparing what's there and what's proposed. Not as much of an issue, I believe, as the previous application. Um, but we are kind of at a point now with regards to moving through it. Yes, we need to get something to finish back to the DOT. We have our zoning board, you know, meeting. We have to get our ARB locked in. Those things are all kind of moving along. And, uh, you know, we, we would hope, you know, within the next few weeks we would have some of that stuff wrapped up and we can kind so of... So all the remediation done on this site? The, the, we're not I know they went through a lot. We're not handling that aspect of it, and I'm not going to say that there's still not currently. I mean, is there anything under the current public, But, you know, a ton of soil has been removed. The tanks have been replaced. Uh, you know, it's, it's constantly, it's continuously and continuously being monitored. Okay. Um, Mitch, can you give the board a status as related to the consent order and the application with regards to the tank remediation, remediation of the site with the EC? In the DC, we have no further action. Yet. We're still doing monitors. We're putting GRC into the to the well, to the works. We cut it by 70, 80 percent, as I say. There's some pollution underneath the building. If we knock it down, we gotta remove it. And I have to monitor it every three months until it's cleaned up. And we put in chemicals. But the levels are came down by 80 percent from from before, from a year ago. Unfortunately, we find, we find even we find uranium, uranium here. Really? Yeah. yeah. Has uranium. Fine. The alarm went off in the truck and everything. We have a mask, on. <laughs> and that's not it doesn't came from gasoline, but I end up cleaning mm. on something within course. Is it, is it Mother Nature? We <laughs> <laughs> hope it was Mother Nature. Yeah. Yeah. Would you get the right on? We all hoping it. Would you get the right on gas and houses? Yeah, some place. You heard it here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mike, it's a weapons grade. Okay. The, uh, the cut where it starts on 376, is that bank property when it goes through the island or is that? It's all in the right of way. It's all in the right of way. It's all in the right of New York State DOT right away there. And the people that own the right of way are the ones who say they're not crazy about it, but if we. No. No, no, no. The, the, no. the right of way is owned by the DOT. Okay. As part of this project, because of its location on a state highway, it's required by law to be referred to the Dutchess County Department of Planning. Their comments were they weren't overly enthusiastic, but they okay. offer comment. It ultimately, at the end of the day, it's the board's decision as long as you know, DOT goes along with it. That's that, that record, it's a public record, that, right. that document's in there somewhere. And Mike, you mentioned that you have some setbacks that you'll, you're um, requesting have a, larger variants than they have today. So you're scheduled to be in front of the ZBA or you've already been in front of them? We've been in front of them once. We were in front of them last okay. month and they were okay. they were comfortable enough to go ahead and schedule a public hearing. We're in front of them a week from tonight okay. for the public hearing portion of the okay. variances. And then just take us again like you did before through the building since part of our public hearing includes the, uh, the improvements on the site. Okay. Again, kind of a, an oddly shaped building probably because these sites are so small. So what you're really looking at here is between the corners But, the, but the effectively, it goes to your, your, your elevation. So you're looking, I would say, it's safe to say, when you're standing on route, well, it's, I guess it's 376 there, staring straight into the property, that's your front elevation. Okay. That is the rear elevation at the back corner. Okay. Right, so I guess right-hand side, left-hand side. The, the left-hand side is that portion which would probably face gonna, up against this, M&T. It's actually going to be out. Okay. Right. And then we have our, uh, our left side elevations and our, and our right side elevations. Um, I think the left side elevation um, probably will not be too visible 
that's kind of the one that's tucked up against the property to the north, mm -hmm. you know, the woodsy type area. Right. And then the, the, the right side elevation is effectively what you're likely going to see um, on that particular corner there on, from the M&T side. To, to that point, um, are you anticipating clearing any trees as you move this building back, or is it mostly all flat right now? I don't think it's... I don't anticipate removing any, any trees, but I, I guess it's, it's just something to discuss to the A or the Architectural Review Board at their initial meeting brought up the question of screening on, the, on that back side there. And okay. I guess I want to also talk about the refuse enclosure. Okay. Um, the, the, the site plan, um, there's, a, there's a fence that exists and there's some evergreen shrubbery that exists along that line there. Mm -hmm. So. Aesthetic standpoint, the, the Architecture Review Board had asked if there's the potential to provide for additional landscaping in that location. The building, as it's proposed in terms of its overhang, is, a, is two foot off the property line, so it's going to make it real tough in that location there. We could probably have a little, we have probably have a little bit of room between the parking spaces to, 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 to provide some additional landscaping there, okay? And we had shown one of the things, concerns they had is reference enclosure. We show up in this spot location here. We don't show enclosure. asking, and I don't know if, again, if it was provided to you in writing or how that works, but they had asked the possibility of taking the reference enclosure and moving it over to the other side. That's, it's really here nor there. In terms of... So from the perspective of getting a truck in to, to empty the refuse, you feel like it works on either side? Yeah, it really does. And, and uh, even probably if you get this perfect, they work better on the other side. Okay. No. Um, it's tough to hide that yeah. anyway. That's that's the problem because it's so. Mm -hmm. Where do we go? Putting yeah, fencing around it now, or what's your? We are. Fencing around it now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Chain link, slatted fence, just. PVC solid, not not see through. Okay. Uh, I, you know. Okay. That's 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 up to you. I, I we told them we would bring that to you, and we would go either way. That adjoining property, Mike, is just basically there's no one living there or anything, is it? I, no, that's it's an abandoned. That's place. an abandoned. Yeah. Abandoned building. Yeah. But at some point, <laughs> in fact, the town has uh, given notice to the property owner about the, the dilapidated garage there to get that taken out. Okay. Questions or comments from the board members? Friendly, quick traffic update before we move at, to the public comment. Yep, at this site, actually, the, the focus is really on the uh, improving the access and circulation. Um, when you look at the uh, generated traffic for uh, development of a gas station and a convenience store, um, if you were to look at the square footage of the convenience store or the number of filling positions, number of filling positions is the more conservative approach and since it's remaining unchanged in theory the site shouldn't generate any you know any additional traffic um, by having a uh, somewhat larger convenience store so uh, you know if, if we if we looked at it and you know tried to generate just on the difference in the, the store the, the pumps would still control so you know we're not we're not recommending a uh, a traffic study um, for that reason. Uh, the improved access, uh, you know, I think, you know, my feeling would be that the 376 offers a vastly improved uh, access for tractor trailer for uh, fuel deliveries uh, and any other delivery or service vehicle for that matter. Um, if, if that, uh, you can get a tractor trailer in on that, uh, uh, in that entrance onto uh, off of 82. But it's difficult, and you know, it definitely can uh, lead to compounding uh, operational and then subsequent safety problems. So, uh, if this option uh, does go forward through the DOT and it turns out to be the preferred alternative, uh, it would also enable it, enable them to put more positive control on the access point closest to 376. Right now, right now, the site has two full access driveways. 
uh, no restrictions in movements, uh, although you know, taking a left turn lane out of the one plus the 376 probably isn't very practical. It's not a prohibited movement at this point. Um, but if the access is allowed on 376, uh, that driveway could be reduced to a right turn in and a right turn out. And then the one further to the east would just remain a full access uh, entrance. Okay. So it offers some pretty, some pretty good improvements that way. Um, certainly a tractor trailer coming off of 376 would be able to make it through and out of the site. Uh, the only way to get in and out is to come in off of 376 and then head eastbound yeah, on 82. Right, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That's really the only way to uh, access the, the site. If it does have to come in off of 82, it can really only come in on the, uh, on the west uh, entrance and then maneuver itself on the site and exit out, uh, exit out the, uh, the eastern, eastern entrance. Okay. Um, as Mike indicated, it's in the same place at the OT as uh, John Jay. Everything that the DOT has requested has been submitted to them, and we're just waiting for their review and comment. Okay. All right. Um, is there anyone here who would like to speak for or against the Hopewell gas station on Route 82? I'll have you come on up just like we did with the last one, and if you don't mind signing in at our clipboard, and then we'll call you up to the podium in, in order. You can just put a plus next to it. wasn't planning on speaking here, but I just want to say, listening to this, again, this is a very nice building. And as someone who uses this intersection a lot, I think having an entrance on Route 82 alleviates what you said. If, because if you're coming on, on um, not on 82, on 376, I'm sorry. If you're coming on 82 and you decide to pull into the gas station, the guy behind you might not know. So that's a very valid point. So I think that's a good improvement. I think it should only be right turn in and right turn out. I don't think you should be allowed to make a left hand turn onto 376. That'd be a disaster. Uh -oh. Actually, yeah, just as a clarification, it only is an entrance. It's a one way in only. Oh, I thought you said. Uh, no, there's the, uh, the you meant the other way. The, the other access on Okay, well, I think adding that as an access is a great idea. And I just want to thank you all again. This is the first public hearing I've been to where I felt people actually listened. So I appreciate it. I think the meeting was run professionally and with good decorum, and I appreciate everybody listening. I don't know your name and who you are, though. Uh, I'm Brendan Fitzgerald. I'm a traffic consultant for the town. Okay. I, think, I thank you. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to offer comments on the Hopewell gas, gas station application? Okay. All right. Brendan, I think for this one, we, we really just are, we're waiting on DOT comments. So as far as um, next steps with this one, I think until we have those comments, we, we, we're not sure which plan exactly we're moving forward with. So. Exactly. I mean, I, I would think maybe just keeping the same schedule then. Is that acceptable, Mike, or is that? It really becomes an issue too. I, it doesn't. I don't think there's as many issues swirling around on this right. one as the right. previous one. It's, it's uh, less impactful as well. Hopefully, Airbnb, we're taking care of ZBA. Hopefully, we should be okay with DOT. You know, it, it, it's up to the board as to whether you'd like to continue to run these, you know, parallel, or could we it's jump up, up a little bit and maybe, you know, no, I mean, grab some of the marks. This you know? is this is a, an improvement to the site in a lot of ways, and there's no reason why they have to move lockstep. This one doesn't have half the issues surrounding it, right? right. So. I think When's we'll the next zoning meeting we're, we're just waiting on we, the DOT comments, too, that we have to make sure we have those back. Yeah. Let's just the last week in March? Or the last meeting in March? <coughs> I, I think about worst case. So we go in next week, which is February, and let's just say for the sake of keeping it nice and tidy and so forth, they say we'll defer our decision to next month, which is yeah, it's the second meeting in your March. Head. March 12th. March 12th. So I would think safely if we make it the third meeting in March for this, which saves us a few weeks shaved off to the previous one, I think that's that's the a second really, planning board meeting that's would be March floor, 19th. You know? that, right. that way we would have absolute, uh, hopefully, yeah. our variances in hand and all that good stuff. Uh, they, they don't have to, these don't have to stay together. I'm, I'm fine with that. Uh, I think we initially discussed them together just because the applications came in at the same time. Yeah. 
Okay. So Any wait a minute. Are, you, are we saying March 19th or the second? March 19th. Is that what we did the last one? No. The, no, other the other one, the other one April. April. All right. The other one's April. All right. We're in the April. On the other one. Right. So this right. one we chaired a few out. weeks if we could get yeah, to the no, second meeting. Yeah. <laughs> um, any, any last comments, Michelle or Joe, before we? Uh, I'm just trying to understand. We're, we're adjourning it to March 19th. No. Yes. Yeah. And why are we adjourning it? Because we don't have the DOT comments. We don't know which plan we're okay. moving forward with. Okay. But we're not. We have to because you have to. Um, you need your neg deck before the ZBA and the ARB can sign off, and they're final. Oh, we don't know what plan. No, I know, we're I know. Forward. I'm like, just I trying to say, as far as timing. Oh, that's right. Because the GBA can't. Uh, right. So I'm just saying they can't give you a variance until there's a neck deck and right. planning board's the lead agency. Yeah, but they can close their public hearing. They can, but I just, I just wanted to make sure that that, that was factored into the timing. Okay. Um, well, let's see. I guess but I, we still can't close a public hearing until we know which plan. Right. Works. No, no, right. you can't I close. Just I just couldn't. I just didn't. I wasn't okay. sure why we're. I just wasn't remembering that piece of it. But okay. But as far as the ZBA is concerned, mm -hmm. we have to make well, sure. we could take a chance and move it up to the first meeting in March and see if we get DOT to respond. If they don't, that might be but better. But if you don't close out with the ZBA and you're. But by then, if you get some comments from the. Uh, DOT, you, do you okay. might be willing to consider closing a public hearing, neck decking it. Okay. Then it goes to the ZBA, they give you a variance, yeah. and then it comes back on. How is and your only risk you run is if DOT doesn't ZBA. grant it. Well, I, I think it they should be okay. on board with it? Or? But yeah, and, and what happens is, is um, it just becomes an issue of that. And I, I'm going by the gauge of this public hearing. Well, that we'll oh, the ZBA same. was I. It, I was at that meeting, and the ZBA was thought it was the best thing. Yeah, they were okay with it. to so clean up the site. They were very supportive. Yeah. Sometimes public hearings extend know. things out, but if I can go by the gauge of what here happened tonight, then I think we're going to be okay. It's just making sure that if we can, or if I can urge them to be able to make that decision. And these are area variances. It's nothing hocus yeah, pocus yeah, about right. it. I just. If um, we make it March fifth, though, your submission deadline is pretty tight after that meeting. I think we want to concentrate at this point, just getting lighting detailed down and things such as that. And uh, the, the refuse enclosure, do we, do we want to talk about that a little bit? Because I want to report back to the ARB on Thursday. In, I'd like the color of the fencing to match the building if possible. Are we okay from, with the location right. here? <laughs> from, a, from a circulation traffic perspective, I would actually think that we might, it might make more sense on the far side, only because. Uh, depending on well, I think definitely you have, if you have the access from 376, I think you need to move it over just so that you're not. I agree. I think you're going to get less traffic around it over there. That's that's what they prefer, so that would be great to make everybody happy. You know? Sure. Sure. Thank you. Any other? Yeah, Lori, we had some question as far as how much the site's going to possibly be open during building demolition and other site work? Is, is, are they going to continue selling gas and have the existing building operate while, I, I think while they do some building? I, I think that the intent is to do that. I think what we'll have to do is, we're going to, is prepare a comprehensive plan that shows what, how this is going to be phased and how mm -hmm. the work's going to be done in order to maintain traffic while it's open. But, but it would be open for gas. It wouldn't be... Um the, the dry goods, right? Really. Unless you bring a trailer in yeah, or something. Yeah, you got to you got to have. So what, what happens is, is this this becomes a very tight situation. Right. Here. So no, but personally. I mean, you would probably put a trailer for pumping of the gas to continue that. But would you sell products still? The intent. Can you come back at the next meeting and clarify. All right. The want. intent is yes, but I think we need to show you how we're oh, going to okay. do that. Because there's a little bump out there, it actually shows on here encroaching. Oh, I see. You'd leave the old building but and the, then build a ramp. Right, but the thought oh. is, is not to build that front bump out first, build up against the other I building see. and do that. But let's, I think that's kind of the question just you're asking. How yeah, does just clarify that. Give us your construction yeah. plan and hours of operation during construction and after. Yep. Is this 24 hours as well, Mike, or is this intended to? Yeah, I believe it's 24 hours from now. I think it is. Okay. This one should be 24. I'm just asking. No, I'm thinking it should be. That's fine. Okay. Any, any other questions or comments from board members? Anything else we should talk about before we, Joe, Brennan, Michelle? Okay. So, Mike, what's your preference, the 5th or the 19th? Well, let's go through those. 
time frames. <laughs> well, I, the thought just that occurred to me, if you put the public hearing over to the 19th, you could put it on for March 5th to consider adoption of a neck deck because you, you don't have to close the public hearing to adopt the neck deck. So by March 5th, theoretically, you could have sufficient information to make you comfortable to do a neck deck. That then would clear the way for the ZBA on the 12th to render their decision in order. And then you would still have the public hearing, on, and that way there wouldn't be any delay with the. So, right. do we do we do the neg deck during the public hearing, or do we adjourn so the we public can. hearing to the nineteenth, but put the neg deck on for the? Fifth? I'm not following. Well, what I'm said. saying you could put the neg deck on the meeting of the fifth, yeah. and continue the public hearing to the nineteenth, if that makes it easier. I mean, because then on the twelfth, if you do a neg deck on the fifth, on the twelfth, the ZBA can give the variance. Then the public hearing, you close it and you're finished. Right. Logistically, we can do that. I don't think, I don't think this town has typically goes through and does a neck deck prior to the closing of public hearing, and maybe that's, that's the question. Mm -hmm. That's the apparently that's the way it's supposed to be done. There's a there's a lot of modification modifications in terms of clarifications of procedurally how. My only done. concern with doing a neg deck on the fifth is if we don't have DOT comment, and we don't know right. which plan we're moving forward with. How are we writing it? Neg deck based on we, you would still need something from DOT. Yeah, right? we, I don't, okay. we'd have to, you got to have something from DOT. Right. Because we're still hanging in the wind here. Well, the DOT, the only impact they have is the, is the cut 376 right. input. Right. 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 That's the only. Which is a significant factor. Right? Yeah. But, but, but I don't think for the negative declaration we care if it's there or not. Or am I totally screwed up? But site circulation, uh, I mean, our mitigations and everything. Mm -hmm would be based off whether or not there's going to be traffic coming in diverted th from 376 and okay but I, I thought if the traffic is diverted in from 376 things get better if not they're the same as they are now right which is why our neg deck would be different depending on how we need to mitigate traffic I don't know how you how could we mitigate traffic there if you don't put the you might change in. or reconfigure the two remaining entrances there's all kinds of things you might consider Okay, I hadn't seen any, I hadn't heard anyone propose that until well, now. Well, because we're all optimistic that this is the plan. But even if we didn't put, even when we discussed not putting the entrance in from 376, I don't remember anyone saying to reconfigure the two entrances. Yeah, there was discussion the about putting that the first one would only be right turn in only. That yes, there I, would be a painted island or a raised island. People did bring that like up, that. yes. Yeah, so. Okay. So I, I was thinking you, you could declare a neg deck now, couldn't you? Issue it and just continue the public hearing in this way that would be in, in place for the zoning board next week? I, I would not be com comfortable doing a neg deck without knowing what plan we're moving forward with. Um, and if the majority of the board is comfortable doing that, that I, but I, for me personally, I, I don't. I just think it's a good idea in the past well, move if, if we can adjourn the, adjourn the hearing to the second meeting in March, that's kind of an automatic. Mm -hmm. okay. Right? And then I think it's a whole additional. I think the answer from DOT is going to be thumbs up or thumbs down. <coughs> I, you know, I, I think that's probably what we're going to get. And that gives a whole month before the first meeting in March to get that answer. So we could be officially adjourned to the second meeting in March, and then we can keep the board apprised. And if we'd like to be back before you for for the for a purpose of a discussion to discuss that one particular item, I guess we can do that. Um, and you could also make the variance a condition of your approval if you did it on the 19th, and then he goes in April and gets it done. Right. I mean, is, is, is there a time consideration where you Keep it we need to rush this through? I, I just explain that, because I but I want to make sure we have that DOT comment. Um, the planning will be construction. I want to lose the summer. Yeah, we'd like to get it done, because it's, you know. <laughs> see him perk up. <laughs> He's right. But my point is, we're, we're, we're trying to finagle dates right you're gonna now do the work too? just in case. But if Are you going to be doing the work? Because if you're going to do it, I'm going to have to double the bond. He's just yeah, what do you see the bond on this one? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mike, we'll, we'll pencil you in for a discussion. <laughs> For a discussion on March 5th, and if we're able to move forward with the neg deck because we have the DOT right. comments, great. If we're not, um, we'll adjourn. I'll uh, entertain a motion to adjourn the public hearing to the 19th. Fair right. enough? Good. Doesn't mean you have to go back to the zoning board, though, again yes. Yes. in March. The 12th. Right. On the 12th of March or the second meeting in April, assuming we get DOT comments, it shouldn't be an issue. 
the position of the building is independent of the access. Yeah. I can act independently. Well, actually, I would argue that that you're getting granted an area variance because you're improving the public safety of the site. Right. Right. So the the circulation and access does heavily weigh into whether or not the the ZBA's decision on whether or not to grant the variance. They would like to see a public safety improvement to grant that variance. Is that their feeling? So, discussion on March 5th to, if possible, contemplate the NEG deck. Otherwise, we'll just get an update on where you stand with it. And it, do I have a motion to adjourn this public hearing to March 19th? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. So, um, if something changes in the meantime, certainly let us know. Yeah, we'll keep you apprised. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next item on our agenda Brand. is a discussion for have. the Taconic Robert Innovations Lord, amended life. site plan on Route 376. Plans not changed. Uh, we've progressed. We, we went to the Board of Health. Um, we've met with them about the, the, the proposed septic system. Um, Change the parking lot configuration. Yes, I'm sorry. We did. Uh, we did re, uh, rearrange the parking to allow uh, flow through traffic behind the, the parking or on the other side of the, the aisle. Did it significantly change the number of spaces or anything? Uh, I think we lost four, but we actually we re-upped the parking. Uh, Calc, we think we're uh, we're trying to reference what we were using here. I think we're down too. Okay. I think that's what we're that's inclusive of the land bank. Okay. Um, as you know, we're leaving this large area here. I have a landscaping plan which we did submit. Um, unfortunately, I didn't bring it with me. That's not working. So okay. I was gonna. But you can see we've we've done quite a bit of landscaping in here. Um, we're using Jet the Sonic groups and Sonic's doing it. Um, the building hasn't changed too much. We've uh, actually progressed. One of the things that's not on this plan, which will be on the plan that's uh, for the public hearing, we're proposing to use a chiller on this building in lieu of rooftop units. Um, the chiller is going to be. So it'll be on a pad? Yeah, it'll be on a pad next to that last site. It's about 15 feet long by about uh, eight and a half feet wide. It will fit inside the setback. We just think it's going to be a better option for this building because of the way it's configured we don't want to go with rooftop units because it's very shallow roof with metal so is there like a fence or is it decorative or is there something it's like actually it's it's not the prettiest thing you want to look at yeah, I was but just wondering how I picture a chiller but, but it's <laughs> if you've ever been back here this is the back of uh, mr. Kelleher's yeah. property there's this is all wooded back in here um, I can't really put a fence around it because it obstructs this thing needs to breathe no yeah well, so if I did do a fence it had to be very wide you know, let's say it wouldn't be, it wouldn't really be a fence anymore. But you'll put, you'll, you'll put the location of the pad and everything. Yeah, I'll show it on here. Get a feel for whether there should be even just maybe a land. You said there's trees there, but maybe a couple shrubs or something. <coughs> yeah, you got to be careful of this thing because it's a big fan. 
So we got to, you know, I have to give it some room. Um, but we thought this was the best spot. One, for it's, too, it's close to the building. It's not out front. It's behind, um, this is Swartz's property that comes around here, which they don't really use. Um, and this is the back of the building sits over here. So I don't think it'll bother anybody. It's not very noisy. It's just that it's, um, you know, we just think it's a better option than a whole slew of condensers. Okay. Um, we worked out a lighting plan. We're going to go with uh, um, obviously a little bit more of a decorative light than I think we originally proposed. Uh, we got the ARB is on. We're going to be a meeting with them Thursday evening. So. With the, the, the rain canopy, so you don't have the landscaping plan because we don't have the AV tonight, but um, is that going to be. Um, Bless you. Is that going to be mostly planting? Are there going to be picnic tables there? It's here. What, what's the right now? It's just idea? it's green space. There are some shrubs. I, I do remember us putting something in here, but right now it's just primary lawn. I'm just trying to figure out whether would this be an area where employees might go to have lunch or something well, like might. that. Or, okay. You might. Yeah. Yeah, I would assume so. Okay. I mean, it's away from the buildings. It's you know, it's kind of your own little park back there. Okay. I want to call it the rink. Yeah. <laughs> okay. One thing I want to talk about, first of all, thank you guys for the last meeting. You really helped me get the removing. We got the, the final permit for this building. Okay. Um, one thing I pointed out in my response letter to, to the uh, consultants was uh, I think Joe would ask for a phasing plan. One thing I'm, I'm going to ask the board if you would consider is um, we've got to actually, in order to get a seal for this building, for phase one, let's call it 877, 879. To get a seal for 877, I always, I obviously got to have this in. Mm -hmm. um, what we'd like to do, if the board would wish it or could get it, we'd like to put binder in here only. That way, while we're constructing this building, the construction vehicles can get on it, and then we can pave final course once it's done. It's nice, it's neat, it's clean. It gives it time for this to settle you know, over the, the time that it takes us to construct this, because you're going to have dump trucks, concrete trucks, you name it, on this. And we just think that if we were able to leave this binder for the time being until this is complete, and then when we pave, we do final coat for the whole thing. That way it's, it's just a, a much cleaner job than trying to patch the whole thing together in the end. Can we put a time frame on it? Oh, it'd be for CO of this. Well, yeah. But, and Mark, it's still two separate. Parcels, no, right? they will be one. They're going to be combined. But you want to put the binder down now is what I'm saying. No, no, no. 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 He's saying can he just do the binder right. and get a CO on To get building? a CO for phase one, 877, okay. I have Sorry, to construct this thing. road, which is partially on eight, an 879. So you don't want to finish it until you're actually done with construction. With everything. Which right. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, Scott, is there? Yeah, that's not un unusual to make that request. The only thing that I would add, you have to do temporary striping. Sure. sure. And you'd have to set your castings flush with your binder course, right. and then adjust them Raise when, it later. when you top it. We only have, we only have these. Uh, there's three that are going to be affected, so the other ones are in the other part. So there's only really three we got to worry about. But we just think it makes a neater job in the end. The only thing, like and typically, you are that second build. typically we we would have. Oh, well, they're going to build. Right. Like maybe hold a bond for that, but we'll have to see how because of the nature of this. I think we definitely would want that. But we'll have to see how we. At least the yeah. final course. Yeah. yeah. So we'll work that out. We can work that out. Well, I suppose your worst case scenario is they go back to the plan that's currently approved, which would be a totally different configuration. Well, by the time he gets the binder, I'm sure this will be well along. Well okay. along the way. Yeah. Mark, the only comment I have about that is, remember with the the whole SWIP and, and the amount of disturbance, and if that where that phasing line is drawn, if you're then over your acre, uh, I guess the timing for when you file your NOI would have to happen before you actually move and do that other work. I you think I'm getting that. I think before we get to that, we're yeah. gonna file the NOI. Okay. Uh, there is some other work that we have to do on this parcel. I did speak to the Board of Health. There, we're right now we're proposing two wells. Um, the Board of Health is saying just connect this building, 877, to the existing well. And then when the time comes, we're going to put a treatment system for both buildings 
in the 879 plant and then backfeed this plant. That way we don't have to drill this, just, this well. Okay, on that note, the town just recently is looking at making a, a major upgrade to the, to the water system. You're gonna connect it now? <laughs> Potentially. Oh my God, you could have told me two weeks ago. Well, two weeks ago, we didn't know. <laughs> All right, this is as of about last week. So um, I'm gonna say within the next two months, we'll have a much better handle on the direction we're going. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, but that doesn't do me any good. Um, well, you gotta try to factor it in. And well, I'll, and I'll, and, and and I'll talk with to Tanya, whoever your contact is at Board of Health, I'll talk to them. I'll seek Board of Health approval. That way I'm staying on the path I'm on. Okay. If you guys choose to give me water, we don't put Priority it in. Priority you putting the filters in, right? Yeah, then I don't put any of that right. in. Right, we can put a note into that effect, yeah. Yeah, it won't go in, you know, by Board of Health approval. Too much, change. you're not going to have a filter. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, so, we put some that. language in there mm -hmm. to that effect. Yeah. In, in what? In what language or water? That if prior to you getting to the point yeah. of installing your filters. I mean, I hate to see you spend 50 grand on filters and tell you hook up to the municipal system, so. Yeah, no, prior, really, that prior to what, it, yeah, prior to that point, if the water becomes available, we want you to hook up. I don't like think. more or less mandatory. If you're telling me in two months, you'll know. Yeah. Uh, you'll be way ahead of us. Yeah, so that's our time. Okay. What's the probability? Probability? Pretty good. <laughs> because would that allow me to sprinkler this? Yeah. Okay, that's good. That's huge. Okay. Oh, and Joe, I did speak to the Board of Health. These two mm -hmm. dry wells, yeah. they do not serve, they're not in a parking lot, they only drain the courtyard. The roof actually pitches away from yeah. us. Right. So it's just whatever water hits it, she mm -hmm. said that's fine. Right. So that's fine. So that's it. Did, did we have this already circulating for lead agency or did we need I think you did. No, I think you, you circulated. You just that. reaffirmed that you were. Um, I thought we asked for these new plants to be circulated. They, now we, they have to be circulated to <coughs> any agency that might have approval, like DOT. And yes, we did ask that. We did. Year. We did circulate. Yeah. Has it been out for the 30 days or no? Okay. Just bear with me. I'm no, just ahead. looking at my notes from the last. Have, the last time you were here, we talked about the ARB. You were in front of them once. They wanted to try to make the two buildings look. No, actually, we met informally um, with the chairman when we were doing the deep test pits. Okay. We met out there. Our actual formal meeting is Thursday. Okay. He did ask me at the meeting to make this building look like that building. But I tried to tell them that this building's bought. It's inside the existing it's building. Right. It's soon to be some assembly required, but it soon will be put on the foundation. And everything's purchased in order to make last year's deadline. I mean, siding, everything's there. Okay, so is there a way then to make the new building, the second building, look like the first building or have some sort of color scheme that's similar or something? I could put Hardy Plank on it. Kidding. Um, the owners really whether it's the same <coughs> trim color or is it well, we are we're, we're going with a we're going with a white pipe on. How's that? We're on the top. It's hard. It's hard because it's, they're two different buildings or two different structures. They sharing work. an entrance, sharing signage. Most colors are so like different that's, buildings. That's fine. Fine. They don't match. The one thing, though, that, that it, from the last time we heard, that's what we were talking about, it's the lighting plant. Yes, I think it's we have we submitted it. I think it's on it's in the uh, it's the landscape uh, sonic group prepared it. Should have been on the set we submitted. Okay. We're uh, I want to say they were twelve foot high. They're. Um, the pine cone, I think, is that the name? I don't know. They, they had like some federal, yeah. I forget the name of it, but it's like a federal style. Yeah, it's nice. It kind of blends. You know, we're not trying to overwhelm it. I missed it. Sorry. No, uh, there's a, uh, it's in the landscaping. I mean, they, they did a lighting and a landscaping. And Joe, I have a note that there, there was possibly a water culvert 
in the back of the property? Have we looked at the stormwater? Where, where are we with the stormwater? Is it have we taken that into account yet, or? Yeah, we we uh, actually met with um, someone in Mark's office earlier today and went over some some of our preliminary comments about the stormwater and the drainage, and we think they're on a you know viable path to get the the uh, the same system just a little bit larger than what they had shown originally. It is seems there like a culvert good. outlet in the back here that? No, it's just an existing low-lying area that has no real defined outlet. Okay. But the soils allow the water to, to go into the ground and to certain times of year to can, can build up and they, they did account for that in the original drainage analysis. Our 30 days was up, I think you said January 25th, so our 30 days <coughs> is up for comment from interested agency, uh, sorry, involved agencies sometime towards the end of February. So Michelle, I'm thinking March for public hearing. Any concern with that? Anything? That work for you, Mark? I think you told me last time, Mark, we had to set it. We'll pretty Did we set it? Or yes, it was set. Yeah, it. Okay, it's you not, just okay. want them back for one month discussion. Okay, it's not on my list. I thought we had done that, but it's not. it wasn't on my list. Man, I got a bowl of paper filled out for it. So okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. The only other uh, the only other thing we need to do is just make sure you bring with you for the public the, the elevations once you've been there. Oh no, we'll bring it all that. Yep, we'll bring it over. We'll hopefully have our A B step up and running, but if we don't, can you just make sure you have a large plan? With yeah, I will. Do you support? prefer the the uh, elevations on? Because they won't. I don't know if they'll come out that low on that. It, it's fine to have them on this. Board. Okay. But just if you don't mind bringing a larger copy of your yep, plan, I just will. in case, I'm not sure what works. Okay. It's I think that's right. a great proposal. Thank you very much. We're open. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, the next item on our agenda was the Hilltop Manor DEIS. I mentioned at the top of the meeting that the applicant asked um, to withdraw that from discussion tonight. Um, they intend to be submitting some additional information to um, address some of the initial feedback from our professionals. So the next item on our agenda is a discussion for St. Aloysius Beacon Road. Sorry, I don't have any uh, graphics other than a uh, 1982 survey. I, uh, my name is Alfred Capelli. I'm the project architect. I had uh, requested a meeting with Scott and the building department uh, yesterday to discuss some uh, improvements that uh, the sisters over at St. Aloysius are looking to make to their two retreat buildings over at San Aloysius. Just to give you a little background uh, on the property site, the top of this map here is Beekman Road. And if you're all familiar with the long driveway to the, uh, to the main facility there of, of uh, San Aloysius, the main house at the end of the cul-de-sac, and it's flanked uh, immediately to the left and the right with two long buildings that are basically retreat uh, centers. They're, they're vacant. Uh, 45 weeks out of the year but on occasion they, they, they have retreats there and the setup is currently almost like a motel type of setup. Um, the, uh, the sisters there uh, are looking to update and upgrade the existing buildings. Buildings maybe last updated in the 1970s. I don't know if anybody's been there. Old wood paneling 1970s bathroom, the bedrooms off of the hallways, and there are gang bathrooms uh, at the end of the corridors. I have uh, actually floor plans reflecting, which again, you're probably not gonna be able to see. Um, and basically the task at hand was uh, bringing the buildings up to code, uh, updating them from an aesthetic point of view, and instead of having those gang uh, bathrooms, if you will, at the end of the corridors, see if we could get at least shared bathrooms, if not private bathrooms, within the confines of the existing footprint. 
So uh, what we attempted to do was, was just that. And uh, surprisingly, within the same footprint of the building, we, um, we got the same number of bedrooms with uh, more bathrooms. Uh, but part of, of uh, once we did that and we accomplished that, uh, uh, Mother Gloria, uh, who's uh, the head of St. Aloysius, said, Mr. Capelli, maybe we want to get a couple of more bedrooms out of it than just maintaining the same number of bedrooms. Um, and right now there's uh, 52 bedrooms, uh, 52 beds. They're all shared. Uh, so just for point of reference, there are 52 beds in these two, uh, in these two buildings. So that being said, um, maybe they want to put a little wing on, so, which we know is going to ne necessitate uh, coming uh, to, to this planning board for full site plan review, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that's probably a, a, a little ways off. You know, we're looking to perhaps phase this project <coughs> and do one of the buildings renovations maybe this year, the other buildings renovation maybe over the winter, and then maybe sometime in 2014 uh, put an addition on for several uh, uh, more beds, if you will. So I thought it would be incumbent upon me to speak to uh, Mr. Byer, the building inspector, and Scott to just explain to him what we're doing here in this phased approach I didn't want to submit demo plans or plans on renovating buildings without everybody getting the overall picture of what we're looking to do here. Um, that being said, um, uh, again, there's no uh, discussion about any addition that's that with that where we're adding uh, uh, bedrooms um, having to come before the planning board and whatever requirements are necessary, health department wise, et cetera, et cetera. Everything else is pretty much a uh, you know, we think a, uh, a building department issue. Um, although there are, you know, and, and, and uh, uh, you know, I'm gonna mention it, you know, I don't think there's, there's any uh, big deal with it, but one of the things that we need to do in order to make this thing code compliant is to have um, a couple of stairwells that meet today's code. And those stairwells were not being placed inside the existing building so there are going to be small appendages on the outside of these two buildings for stairwells. Okay, whether that necessitates site plan review for those, that's part of what we're discussing here in terms of going outside the bounds of, uh, uh, of the footprint. We discussed thinking it's not a big be, deal, but... Are they going to be open stairwells? No, no, they're going to be closed stairwells. in stairwells. Okay. Actually, one of them is going to you know, uh, at least one of them is going to have an elevator. So it's going to be a stairwell and an elevator to get to the second floor. So these are going to be, I'm going to say, in the neighborhood of maybe 8 by 20, 8 by 18 uh, appendages on, on either side of the building. Okay. And um, so you're also looking to add cantilever to the second floor? We're also looking, yes. Uh, uh, thanks for reminding me. The footprint of the building, these are two story buildings. Uh, I'm sorry I don't have any photographs uh, of them with me this evening. Half the building is, is, is vintage brick, the other half is vintage wood frame in both cases. In order to get a little bit more space on the second floor, I'm cantilevering the second floor. So footprint 24 foot wide, you can imagine how difficult it is to get a center hall to meet code today and having the remnants of bedrooms, if you will, on either side. So in order to gain a little bit more elbow room, uh, yes, in my infinite wisdom, we're cantilevering the second floor on half of this building and half of that building because I don't want to touch the brick portion of the building and, and think about cantilevering that. So half of each building, I'm cantilevering two foot front and back, uh, if you will, uh, to gain a little bit more space. And these are just simple two-story uh, now uh, uh, horizontal, aluminum-sided, simple gable roof buildings. The architectural, I don't know what we're going to do yet. We're, you know, we're very, very early into the, into the, uh, into the scheme of things. But again, in part of my presentation to, uh, to Ken and Scott was just to explain what we're looking to do. And, and, and again. So, 
he thought maybe it'd be a good idea to discuss this with you guys. So I'm just trying to understand, you're not gonna raise these buildings, you're going to renovate the buildings, but the second floor, you're going to expand by two feet. That's correct, um, that's correct. Is it front and back or side to side? Front and back, front and back. There was a discussion about raising the buildings at one time. There was another contractor who came in, spoke to them before I was involved. We want to gut the whole buildings. We want to, you know, start from scratch. We want to maybe make the buildings a little bit bigger to accommodate us. And when she brought me in, I said, if you want to do that, you're not starting this year. Right? You know, I'm going to guess that we're going to have to start the whole site plan process all over once I start expanding it to that degree. So I said, uh, if you can live with some of the rooms on the first floor being smaller, and only one of the buildings on the first floor has bedrooms, the other uh, 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 building has a large uh, community type of room, and the other half has a little living area, dining area type of, uh, and a little, a little kitchen to facilitate when people do stay there on weekends, uh, a little, you know, so they're not stuck in their rooms. So really, I'm, I'm talking about tiny cubicles, uh, you know, on the first floor in building B. And then again, my thought was to expand slightly, two foot, two foot cantilever. Yes. So, I'm so let me just, one thing action. we discussed about yesterday, which is why I wanted Al to come. If they took the approach of raising the building and replaced it with a modern building with the same bedroom count, albeit maybe a little bit bigger, footprint. I mean, same bedroom count, bed count wouldn't affect the parking. Right. Okay, and forget the addition for the time being because that might be a phase three later. But, it, right. but I mean, I feel given the scope of the renovation they're looking at, it, it might make more sense just to raise the building and replace it. The concern is, is it going to take them six months or a year to get through the planning board? And you know, the question is if they're not increasing the number of bedrooms, do they even need to come before the planning board for that? Can they just get a building permit? Well, I, would, I have a couple of comments. I think first you, ha you have to look at whether, um, and Tom, you can probably answer this, whether this site would need to be subject to an ARB review because it sounds like we're changing. Well, it would be a building design. permit with we can, ARB. We can do that through yeah. the building so, department. Yeah, right. Absolutely. I would intend to do that anyway. Right. Absolutely. So then the only other thing that I think I heard now that I would want to see in front of the planning board is a minor site plan. What, maybe a minor site plan modification to add the stairwell. Mm -hmm. and which, stairwell which we could possibly elevator. have them do by the letter application approach right. because it's what eight by eight. so it's no, 160 no, I mean, square foot right. footprint right he'd still be adding those if he builds a whole new building yes but it, but that would afford him the ability to locate it maybe centrally the elevator as opposed to all the way on one end of the building and it gives him if he decides I to do that. that and i thank scott for 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 uh, you know allowing us or suggesting that maybe we you know enlarge the building to that degree. I haven't even reviewed that yet with my clients. I mean, now we're talking about additional expenses, well, foundations, et cetera, et cetera, in order to do that. So I'd have to talk to them about that as well. It's not, it wasn't in the original program. And so we may not, but, but, the, but the intent here is to, I don't want to say for building A, again, we're going to be phasing this. Building A, start gutting and demolishing the building, again, down to the foundation. Um, to can within, just within to a couple the, of months. Yeah. The cantilever to second floor. Yes. You now basically have to tear the roof off, right? Absolutely. And you have to re uh, splice onto your floor joists, if not replacing the floor joists. Replacing the floor joists. Replacing the floor joists, <laughs> yeah. and then coming up with new walls to correct. Correct. I mean, correct. That's Whole pretty significant. Floor. Whole new second floor. Right. That's pretty significant. It certainly scope is. Scope of. You might as well build a new building. Could, could I ask a question? The. Um, if the buildings were made bigger, what area would be impacted by the increase in size? Just grass area and landscape? Yes, grass area. Actually, this it's, it's very diff difficult for you to see. This little hatch dark area here actually would be the addition. Uh, the building exists from left to right there. And about 15 years ago, we came before this board. <laughs> Some of you may or may not have been here. We added onto building B, what I call building B, a, um, a community room and additional daycare facilities onto the end of this building. So there seems to be a little L shape here and basically we were mimic mimicking that so that uh, our little addition for some additional bedrooms would create the L. And this is all grass, this is all green here, we're not you know, encumbering on 
on anything else. I mean, there are many other issues there that we have to contend with, but, uh, uh, you know, again, we have the time to do it given the fact that we're going to be taking our time and phasing this. Uh, so you're going to demolish the second floor, and the roof, to rebuild, but you don't want to take the whole building down and just replace well, everything. Well, the, the discussion with um, Scott. with Scott and Ken, it, we make it to the point that we even take the first floor walls down, but I didn't want to touch the foundation because, again, I thought that would be sacred in terms of not going beyond those boundaries, uh, uh, necessitating a, a planning board review, and, 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 and that's where and that's where Scott said, hey, let's have a discussion. Maybe we'll let you go out another two foot here and there. Not that I was asking for it. And maybe you don't have to go for, for a, uh, a full-blown review. Because again, they want to get things, they want to get things uh, moving here. So just to confirm again, you're not talking, because right now you're not talking about putting the actual addition on the second building. You're talking about Absolutely. the exact same. Just the stairs and the elevators. Just the stair towers and the right. elevators. But, right. but just to clarify, you're talking about the exact same number of bedrooms, even though the buildings will be configured slightly differently. Same you're number of bedrooms. You're talking about building up to code. You're talking well, about making sure that um, you have the appropriate access to second floor through an elevator. Absolutely. And adding stairwells that. Yeah, and and and, and, and the stairwells must exist now. It looks like they're in the middle. Yes, there are internal the stairwells. So you're going to add bedrooms in place of those. Stairwells yeah, basically, or? in order to, I'm adding bedroom. I mean, I'm adding bathrooms. The bedroom the bathrooms. count remains okay. the same. And again, it's it's I have two bedroom, two bathrooms per floor, and everybody's got to run down the end of the hallway to use the bathrooms. I mean, it's that's mm -hmm. maybe the 1970s or or back in the day. Yeah. Today, people are a little different. So we're creating shared. Uh, shared bathroom so that, um, let me see, in one particular configuration here, which is this building here, uh, same building, community room, dining room, kitchen, living room, the bedrooms upstairs, there are 18 bedrooms before, there are 18 bedrooms now. Yes, I was forced to, to move things and spread them out, stairwell, elevator, down at the far end, uh, which is uh, to make it a legal set of stairs. I don't want to say the existing stairs are illegal, but, and the bedrooms become a little bit larger by virtue of the two foot cantilever. I mean, you have, where these buildings are situated, you have plenty of room. It's not like you're okay, encroaching yeah. on a neighboring property. You're, you're talking about from, from a planning perspective, the footprint of the building would change at most by a couple of feet in whatever you're doing with the stairwell. Change, the use isn't changing. I don't and the parking's like, not changing yeah. until they get to the addition part. Yeah. Well, the addition would be different. That would have to that's come different. in and go through a regular yeah. process, but that's not what you're talking about. I guess I'm, if Can it makes sense to raise the building and change the footprint a little bit, I think if you bring it in and get, show us what you're doing, uh, personally and the rest of the board can weigh in, I'm seeing that as a minor site plan modification to bring it up to code and not change its use. And the, the only comment I have is just, just that whatever, I, I don't know what plans exist currently for the site. In other words, is there an accurate site plan currently for the site, or are we kind of working on? No, basically, and the reason for it, and I think we talked about it yesterday, <laughs> I have nothing but a 1982 okay. survey here. So already, in order, you know, forgetting about getting on the planning board next month or the month after, for the addition, which I wanted to take our time and do what we had to do, do our due diligence, I don't have it. I don't have a survey. I got to go out, solicit a surveyor, get them to go out there in the field, and maybe two months before I even have something here in order to prepare a site plan, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I think you could give us a feel for what you're proposing as far as what the new footprint will look like, what the existing footprint looks like, and it's just in a letter, not changing the use, not changing sure. number of bedrooms. I understand the bathrooms are changing to modernize, but um, to me, and if it's you not do the one building on this side, that's only having the stair. An elevator, additional square footage, you could probably get that to go ahead by yeah, a letter. We have a minor, to me, that we have the ability yeah. to approve minor right. site plan exactly. modifications. This is the classic example of why exactly. we would want to be able to. It's really just not a putting a new building into uh, the slot with a couple extra feet. And then I guess, but what I'm getting at is, I, I mean, you're, you're talking about cantilevering a second floor and doing things like that. Which if you decide even it's easier right. to knock it down and just expand by the two feet, for okay. me, that's still minor because you're not really, you're not changing the use or the size or the capacity. I, so I will speak to them, and that letter that we're going to submit to you may have enlargement of the building, or the letter may only address the stairwell and the elevator shaft, 
depending upon which way they and want to go. And then just explain you're still doing the cantilever. Yeah, we're still going to do that. Or key is you're keeping the same number of beds. Absolutely, 100%, you know, in this particular case. And the same beds, square footage of common area. S same square footage on the footprints, right. minus the cantilever on right. half of the building, yeah. two foot, two But your foot. extra square footage is for bathrooms. It's not for community rooms. Bathroom. No, no, no. no. They, they want to make the bedroom bigger. Yeah, yeah, the bedrooms, bedroom. but it's not, yeah. I mean, it's we're talking like about 30, yeah. two yeah. foot by yeah. 30 yeah. foot, two yeah. foot yeah. by 30, 120 square feet per building. That's all we're talking yeah. about, Mine, plus the elevator uh, and <laughs> right. stairwell. But the square footage is insignificant. And that, and the, I mean, I don't have But if it makes more sense to to add the two feet to the foundation, do I'll, what makes more sense. I'll ask the bill. We had, you know, there's a builder in place. I like to see put something some numbers that looks together. really nice out there rather than yeah. something that just to make it work. Sure. To bypass the point of court. Yeah. <laughs> just, I think he's, I mean, it's still worthwhile to go to the ARB and just have them take a look at what the outside of the but building we're calling like, it but that's, like you said, part of the building process. I don't yes, think yes, we yes. Well, when we're calling it a site plan modification with no site plan. I mean, well, that's, that's, that's what I just that's wanted to finish my comment. I just want to finish my comment. Yeah, I, I, the only concern that I have is that if there is no existing site plan, we're making changes to the building, and then in the future. I think that's. Yeah, well, no, that, that's and that may suffice. Plan. That's the site plan right there. Okay, well, that may suffice, but I'm, I just want to I'm make sure that, that anything what that we have for the record shows whatever is proposed so that you have, like, if, if they come in in another year for an addition, we have something to work off of and something to enforce, more importantly, something to enforce. And when and you come back for the addition, we would probably do a little bit more formal site plan. Absolutely. But what you have site. now for me is, site. I mean, this. They were here like a couple of years ago, weren't they? Yeah. yeah. They, That's what you said. For what? Yeah. Well, we, we came 15 were years you? ago, no. and we got the daycare. But recently, yeah. they came before you. Mike McCormick came before you for the, an extension to the chapel. That's, I understand. Yeah, that's what it was. OK. It's, it's only a few, not too many years ago. Yeah, it was a couple, it was like two years ago, yeah. maybe three. They couldn't find, they couldn't find the office, you know, and they got like a corner, and something Absolutely. happened. They couldn't get it approved or something. So it's or somebody no, they like came in for discussion, and that was it. Oh, I mean, I mean they had a public hearing. Yeah. Just they have a make sure you have it. So, uh, what we're thinking is if you submit this as existing site plan, explain it's all, it is what it is, and then just tell us the change that you want to make, sure. and we can formalize the uh, okay. documentation on the site and itself. Then, one other question I asked was if there was any historical significance to those structures. You didn't know quite how far back they go, but not, they didn't predate 1900, so. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, I'm guessing, no, the additions certainly are circa 1960s or so. The brick buildings, I don't think that they're pre yeah, they're brick, Small, but I don't think they predate 1900. So there wouldn't but be I can a historical I mean, I can, in terms that they did raise. Them. I can certainly find out. Okay. If, yeah, just add that so. to your letter then as, sure. as well. Give us the approximate construction dates of the buildings. And, okay. okay, very good. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. That was great. Um, anything else we need to go over tonight? Do so we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, everybody. Aye. You know what I don't have in my files? I think that's it. Okay, so that's all you have. 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 Okay, so that's all you have.